When it comes to diet, especially when it comes to fat loss, try this instead. Don't take things away, is what everybody tells you to do. Cut things out of your diet, that's what everybody says. Try this, add things to your diet. Now you're probably thinking, that makes no sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. If you add the right things, there's downstream effects in terms of weight loss, in terms of improving your health. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit in today's episode. But psychologically speaking, adding things does not feel the same. It doesn't feel restrictive. So let's talk a little bit about how to add things to make you lose weight, specifically. I wish that I had figured this out earlier in my career. And it took me 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> And even when even when I pieced together, this was not something that I, I learned somewhere. Like I didn't go somewhere and and take a cert or have a mentor who's like, this is the way to do this. Nobody, I, I just started to piece it together because after looking at all these diets, I found my clients like almost always were under consuming protein. And I knew how essential protein was to build muscle and to speeding up the metabolism. And I remember just deciding, at, and this is again after failing so many people who were trying to lose weight. Like, you know what? I'm gonna this client. I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on building muscle since I know how important and valuable that is. Instead of just this formula of how we're taught to just cut calories, totally. move more, cut calories, move more. And I remember flipping it on its head and having so much success, and then starting to do that again and again. And then I started to notice these other things, like. I didn't notice, like, I didn't understand the psychological part until after the effect. Like, yeah, the original yeah. thing was... Then you went back and you're like, oh, yeah. this is what I just yeah. saw it was deficient, right? And yeah. I'm like, oh, we got to get this in there. Yeah, I, I wish I could say I was I was, I was was that brilliant that I knew all the, like, psychological benefits of it and all these other things, downstream positive things that would happen. But it wasn't that. It was literally, like, everybody doesn't get enough protein. I know how important that is building metabolism. Okay, forget dieting right now. I'm just going to tell this person, go get their protein. We're going to worry about their stuff later. And then it was all the other stuff that I started to realize, <laughs> like oh shit, when I just focus on that, like it tends to kind of get rid of some of those other things that I don't even have to tell them not to do and they don't even realize it. So you sort of see the psychological benefits. And then also you're now feeding their body with their needs. And so the workout started to get better. The results started coming yep. on faster. They were getting stronger. It was like, it was yeah. crazy. But all, I mean, so I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing this right now with, uh, with Chad, you know, Chad, and he, mm -hmm. he's like, hey, help me with my, my diet a little bit. So I said, all right, <clears throat> let's start with this. He's like, what do I cut out? Do I cut this out? Do I cut that out? And I said, no, no, I don't want you to cut anything out. I said, what's your target body weight? I want you to hit that in grams of protein from real food, not shakes, and eat it first. And he goes, what? He's like, so just hit the protein? So I explained a little bit to him, which I'll get into in here in a second. But he's like, all right, I'll give it a shot. Of course, two days later, he sends me a text. And he's like, bro, he goes, it's really hard. And he goes, when I do it, I don't really want to eat a lot of other things. And I said, well, that's the point. Protein really uh, produces satiety. Okay, this is, data backs us up. 100%. If you eat a high protein diet, you are far less likely to eat too many calories. Then number two, when the diets are controlled, a diet that's high in protein versus a diet that's not high in protein, even the same caloric intake, they lose more body fat and build more muscle than the group that doesn't have as much protein. So it also works yeah. in that sense. But then psychologically, when someone tells you you can't do something, you know, that, that kind of triggers something in most people versus, especially mm -hmm. when you're trying to lose weight, right? Trying to lose weight, like, I know I need to cut things out. I know I need to stop doing certain things. And then some, someone comes along and says, you know what, don't worry about that. In fact, I want you to eat more of this one thing and just do it first. Then don't worry about the rest. If you want to eat more, you can. It's like, it feels freeing. It feels yeah. like I'm not restricted. Like you don't have to fight against it. Yeah. yeah, but the result is you end up eating less calories because protein is so satiety producing. And most people, if you try this, you try to hit your target body weight, in grams of protein and you do it consistently and you do it from food and you really do it, 80 to 90% of people will come back and say, this is hard. I feel like I'm stuffing myself. Yeah. I can't eat this much. It feels like I'm eating too much. In reality, eating less calories. Well, just, you know, from another angle, and I know protein's definitely one that I'll focus on first because of that simple <clears throat> fact alone too. And most people are deficient in that. And then it's very satiety uh, driven. Well, I had a client that, we just, because there was zero emphasis on vegetables at all, there's like no vegetables in their diet. Like their fiber intake was like nil. Like yeah, there was like nothing in one. there, right? Yep. And so it was like just focusing on, okay, I just want you to eat a cruciferous vegetable. Let's just focus on broccoli. Like that's it. And it's like, ugh. Like it had all this like sort of, I don't know. I could see if I could just eat like, you know, one bushel a day or whatever. Yeah. And, and so they just slowly started doing that. And just, that's fine. Just consistently. And then over time, 
it it became it, so you have to go through a little bit of that gastrointestinal distress because like you know it'll be a little bit of the gas and all that kind of stuff and like he was kind of like complaining about that but then in a very short amount of time started to crave it and then started to crave it just naturally started to bring more and introduce more into there which substituted other you know processed food he was eating before that yep. it, it was it had its own effect uh you know beneficial effect by just adding that one thing in. Yeah. That's normally number two for me. Almost Fiber. always. Almost always. It's I go protein first because everybody's missing. And then two, I would add like, and I would, I would start. Hit your fiber targets. Yep. And I would even keep it simpler for them. Like I'm obviously, I know how much fiber is in X amount of, you know, bowls of broccoli, whatever. I would just be like, hey, I want, you know, two bowls of, your favorite green vegetable. And I give them like a, 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 like this, 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 and this, here's all your options, yeah. you know, and just all I want you to do is make sure you get that with your meals yeah. and you keep hitting your protein target. It's like, and it's so wild how, because that is so difficult. If they're just kind of focused on that, how everything else just kind of starts to, to fall into place. It's so trippy. And how many people too think that they eat a lot of protein and they don't realize it no, until uh, they actually start tracking and going after it that no. they're under eating it. no 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 it's uh but Most by the way times. the data shows when it comes to satiety right to, to crushing your appetite it goes protein first fiber second fat third carbohydrates fourth fiber is right up there so that's why you found mm -hmm. that yeah. you bump your protein and fiber you just end up wanting to eat less and like what you said I, you know again chad sends me a picture of his breakfast he goes oh this is good right it's enough protein and i looked at it and i'm like Bro, we're, we're aiming for 200 grams of protein. That's 35 grams. You're already behind the eight ball. Unless you plan on eating five meals today, yeah, you're going to have to make up for it. And he's like, oh, crap. And yeah. Of course, he, you know, later, you know, text me back. He's like, bro, this is actually Hard. like, I don't want to eat a lot yeah. now because of it. I'm like, that's the point. Yeah. yeah. Versus trying to cut things out, which, you know, psychologically is different. And number two, you don't get the benefits uh, in terms of the muscle sparing effects uh, of protein. And we know this. We know that eating a high protein diet leads to more muscle and that'll contribute to getting leaner as well and feeling better. And you, so, you, we, we can't uh, discount <clears throat> or minimize the psychological part as if it's just, Oh, one of the benefits. That's the most important. Exactly. It's like, as, as I got more experience as a coach and trainer, the more I realized, in fact, I know on the podcast just recently, I said that it almost became so important that the X's and O's, all the other stuff yeah. was, I didn't have to worry about all I had to do was worry about the psychological part. And then I could figure everything else out. And so that this is a big part of of that equation is getting them to do that. The psychological benefits of that is unbelievable and arguably the most important part. So it's the easiest thing to I think help ninety percent of the people get. Now to the their key with this goals. is because some people hear this and they go, "Oh, well, I'm going to add protein shakes to everything." <clears throat> Proteins don't. Um, uh, protein shakes don't produce the same satiety effects as eating whole natural foods. So whole natural foods, they're gonna give you much more of the satiety effects of the protein shakes. Protein shakes, they're already pre-digested. Um, they don't, uh, you don't have to chew them. You don't have to, you know, produce the same enzymes. They're typically, obviously the process, they're hyper palatable. Protein shakes are beneficial at the end of the day if you always consistently miss or you have a challenge, or if you're trying to bulk, that's when it becomes much more, uh, much more valuable. But so, in terms of what we're saying, go whole natural food. So this is how I would, I would position it because what I found with that was more than half of the people really struggled to do it without. And so I would say, okay, we can use the protein shakes and we're good. But then I want the way you to think a way to think about this is like, this is just a step in the right direction, or this is just a step to getting to your goal. And our first goal was before we get to your weight loss goal, before we get to all these other goals that we want to do, is to hit that protein in whole foods. So go ahead and use the shaker bars for now, just so you hit it, because I'd rather you hit it than not hit it. And, and just because I tell you, I'd rather get it from whole foods, but then don't even do you, when you score yourself in your head, like, Hey, how was today's eating? That's just cause you hit your protein take. It's not a perfect day still. It's yeah. not until we can get to this in whole foods. That way they have this, like, they know that it's okay, that it's a tool, that it's something we can use, but the ultimate goal yeah. is to be able we're to- We're working towards that. Yeah, we're working towards that. The goal is to get to this place where you're you're eating it all through Whole Foods. Totally. Today's program giveaway is MAPS 15. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Also, this month's sale, MAPS Anywhere and MAPS Hit, both 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Speaking of Chad, by the way, um, so he's, you know, I'm, I'm, he's a pastor and I'm, he's like a Christian. He's, I hired him as a Christian coach and I've, it's had some really profound effects 
in a very short period of time on my life. Super, super profound. I'm not going to get into it, but like just uh, pretty insane. And I was thinking a lot this morning, meditating, praying, whatever. And you popped into my head, Adam. I was going to ask you a question because mm. uh, I thought about you and I know when you were a kid uh, or in high school, I think it was, yeah. at one point you almost, you, you wanted to pursue becoming a pastor at one point. So my family really wanted that. My, okay. my parents, uh, I don't, I wouldn't say that I ever did. I think that I've always been pulled uh, into it being closer to God or being interested in that and learning. And, um, but, and I have always had the personality of uh, being social and comfortable and so they're like this is for you yes okay. so it was more like that and it would actually be interesting since you're meeting with Chad and talking to Chad it'd be interesting to hear I don't know what my parents ever communicated to him like I, maybe they told him like well so here was <laughs> you know, like, well here's my thought because I'm thinking about this and I know how you grew up you had a really rough childhood and for all intents and purposes statistically speaking you're completely an outlier for where you should be if you if, for anybody who listens to the show sure like, uh, you know, Adam, you know, 90% of the people or more that uh, who grew up like you did would not end up where you're at. They would end up in, in, in a terrible place. And so I thought, I wonder how much, like, where do you think you would be if you didn't have, if that wasn't a part of your life at that? Because that's one thing that was a part of your life. Yeah, I, I would actually- Do you actually, think that that kept you- That was the most important thing. Okay. When I look back and I say- um, you know, because I went through a phase with with my parents of having a lot of, and I've shared this before, right? I had a lot of animosity in my <clears> like <throat> teens and uh, early twenties towards my my parents, just about the just how they raised us, the hypocrisy, the shit that we did, went through, blah 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 blah, right? Um, but when I look back now as an older adult, one of the things that my mom did really well was from a very young age, um, we were, we were, we were in church and we were learning and we were reading and Do you think that saved your, like your, like kept you as one Sure. Of the because you know, what's so a, funny is like, you know, it's cause crazy. I mean, literally bro, I mean, when I hear stories and you tell, and you tell it nonchalant, you talk about it like, it's no big deal. Holy shit, dude. A lot of people, I, I don't know very many people at a turned out okay i you know i think that and this is again why I, th I feel so strongly about um you know how raising a kid now um why the what uh arthur brooks said about church what jordan peterson said yeah. about church how much that's kind of weighed on my heart now is because i think so much is happening uh subconsciously and you don't even realize as a child you're just just like you can get indoctrinated into bad things or pick up bad behaviors yeah. from parents what I was, was I had, I had leaders like Chad. I had leaders like the pastor and the youth leaders and stuff that were around me that were preaching. Message. Even though I had this hypocrisy at home and all this turmoil and all this drama, I did have these safe places that I was in a weekly, on a weekly basis, consistently in and, and hearing. And I think that messaging just sunk in. I think that messaging of what was the truth, what was right, what was good. Um, so I think it laid a very good for moral foundation. And as I got older, even though I kind of went away from uh, like going to church or carrying with those teachings, I think that foundation was built. And so that even when I was out on my own in the world and I was, I had, and I and you still the, were tethered. There was still, a that's right. Yeah. I was still tethered to him. Like, <clears throat> like, like it says, right. Once a child of God, always a child of God. So I had that, I think found tethered to him. It's a good way to say it. And, you know, if, and what I got is, I tell you what, what brought me back as I got older was just reflecting on my life and realizing that how crazy is it? All the bad ups and downs that we all have in life, I could, I could literally connect them to getting, going away from what I was taught and all the things that unfolded the right way and unfolded the right way doesn't always mean like I win or I get something, but that, that served my life for the better, being a better person, and uh, was when I made those right choices. Wow. So, and as I got older, I think that was the appreciation that I started to have for like, hey, you know what? Like, I know I give my mom and stuff a really hard time about everything that we went through, but she's definitely responsible for, you know, keeping me in, in front of that stuff and listening and hearing that stuff and, and digesting it because it was, it was, it's, it's always been there. And so I think that, as you get older and a little bit wiser and more experience, uh, if and you, you grew up in something like that, you tend to be, you can draw back and I can, you know, every, when we, t I'd hear things like, you know, and you hear this a lot and I know you're definitely have to be experiencing this because of your journey right now. Like 
we all have like great philosophers or people that we read or, or books that were impactful and stuff like that. And what's even wilder to me is that I can draw those all the way back to biblical stuff. Yeah. So some of the greatest works that, and, and, and authors and things that we read today, you know, you're like, Oh man, that was a brilliant book or that was just a brilliant philosopher. And if you go back there, like that lesson's there. Yeah. And so that, so that was, that's been wild as I've gotten older and kind of went away from, you know, always reading my Bible and going and reading other works is I started to make that connection of like, Oh, this is, this guy is incredible. Or this author is awesome. But this same exact lesson I actually was given to me through this passage or like that. So that's, that's been a trip. Yeah. Really crazy. Uh, which brings us to another conversation because really this weekend I've been, um, diving deep into the the whole GLP-1 agonist kind of world. And mainly because, you know, we're, we're seeing what's happening. We're seeing what's happening with mainstream. I'm looking at the data, and this weekend I went deep in the data, and we've never seen anything like this. Like, there's never been a non-surgical medical intervention that's produced, in terms of just weight loss, results like this. Yeah. And I'm looking at this, and I'm really trying to reflect, like, okay, when have we seen stuff like this before? What what has happened as a result? Um, are there unintended consequences? Should we be cautious? Um, my wife now, she tried out one of the GLP ones, didn't like it, made her feel nauseous type of deal. So she had some input. We were talking and I was thinking really, really uh, deeply about this. And I thought back to the other medical interventions or other medical inter- interventions that changed like the course of, of culture. Okay. Because I think that GLP ones present, uh, present this potential. They could literally, literally from a weight loss perspective only, and we're going to get into this a little more. So don't just get excited here. But if you look at the trajectory of, uh, you know, obesity, right? Just obesity. And you look at the impact that GLP wins have in the data in terms of weight loss, they, this is the one thing that literally could reverse that trajectory. I've never seen anything like this in that sense, aside from doing it the right way, eating right, exercise, whatever, but we know how challenging that is for people. So I'm like, holy shit, this, this is going to impact us in such a massive way. And I look back and I thought, what other medical interventions have we created that have done that? And I think of uh, opiates, uh, antibiotics. Um, I think of um, you know other, like birth control. And they did have some tremendous positives. Like painkillers like, didn't even come close to opiates. until. And there's tremendous benefit. You get a lot of pain opiates are going to, are going to save you or help you. Um, antibiotics, obviously you get an infection, antibiotics saves your life. Uh, birth control obviously, um, changed a lot of things. Did we over prescribe them? And are there, were there unintended consequences, potential negatives? Well, yeah. Opiates, we have an opiate addiction epidemic antibiotics. We're now in a situation where scientists are like, we're going to create uh, bacteria that are so resistant to antibiotics that they're going to, they're, we're going to go back to you know, medieval times with the plague, we got to be very careful. And we just over prescribed the shit on for a while. Um, so I'm looking at these and going, okay, we need to take a step back and be very careful. And one of the first place. And so why, why I'm saying this is I come in here and I'm like, I got to tell the guys, we need to really be cautious. I didn't realize you guys already had a conversation about this, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is so cool. I'm so good to all be, we're always aligned mm-hmm. with that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, where my mind goes with this is, uh, the data shows weight loss, but it shows muscle loss because that's what happens when you just stop eating or eat less. That's just what happens. Your body tries to slow your metabolism down to meet the new caloric um, intake. And I thought, well, how many of these people on GLP ones are going to try to eat more protein or going to go actually do real strength training to offset the negative? Probably not a lot. Probably not a lot. Probably not a lot. How many health issues are a result of obesity and how many health issues are a result of not enough muscle? The truth is, we do have an obesity epidemic, but we also have a frailty epidemic. Yeah. People are, the strength, muscle mass, mobility has gone down for a long time. People are just not strong. This is causing problems as well. A sizable minority of people have heart disease and diabetes who are not overweight. They're just, they're just metabolically unhealthy. And so are we, are we really going to solve this problem or are we going to overprescribe? We're definitely not, be gonna, we're definitely not going to solve this problem. Yeah. I, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I just historically um we never solve any problem <laughs> we really don't we 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 find uh better answers better solutions uh we have lots of good ideas uh we do save a lot of lives with western medicine and things yeah. like that um 
but there seems to always be uh, the abuse, the you know, the overprescribed. There's going to be that. I, I, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, or just not using them right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's. I mean, and we're going to be going. The one to, benefit I see is it'll reduce plane tickets. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Shrink them back, dude. I. You know, I, this is I this was that. really my motivation, right? Obviously. Uh, I mean, I, I hope, I mean, I know I got fat cheeks, but I didn't need to lose that much. <laughs> yeah. I didn't need to lose that much weight, right? Yeah. Like that wasn't like, but I really, I was so, I was so. You want to be able to communicate, right? Yeah, yeah. I was so intrigued by, uh -huh. by this. And I feel like, um, I know, I mean, you've probably already done a deeper dive than I did, but I, I started to have so many people that was connected to me that were curious about this. And, and everywhere that I read, I felt like I could, I could get something uh, that made me feel really strongly about one side or the other. You know, you can find some stuff that will just scare the shit out of you and make you go like, this is going to be terrible. Yeah, right. And then you can see the other side. It's like, oh my God, it's the best thing that we've ever had, which I mean, okay. I think that's, I think that's a sign. The biggest sign that I took away from that was it's not going anywhere. It's not, not that it's the best thing ever or that it's the right. worst thing it's just ever. Not any good protocol like deal with adjacent it. to it. You yes. know, yes. To put that it's, it's coming. And so, with. and our job as, as you know, what we do is like, okay, let's, Let's. It's not going anywhere. So let's see if we can help people do this the right way and steer people away who don't need to be using these. The yeah. biggest questions I'm getting are the I'm, my DMs is nothing but this now. That's what all everybody's oh, yeah. communicating it's, with me and wanting to know about. The one that gets every throws everybody a loop for is this. Um, you know, me not caring about losing muscle or me not like really actively trying to like preserve it. And I, you know, I'm like the the reason for that is I just. I really want to try and experience it like the average person. And I don't want to try to be a, a bodybuilder into this. Yeah, like who's how many people do you know who have your ability to force feed themselves protein, who understand how to strength train properly and do it consistently, who are also going to take a yeah. GLP-1 because they're obese? Because then, cause then I feel like my opinion is is worthless. Right. You know, like it really is. If I like, go basically it's, here's what Adam can do yeah. to the best of his ability. Yeah. So yeah. to me that, to me, I think where my, my opinion on this will, will carry some weight is if I just kind of let it take its course and train when I feel like I can and, and feel like it's, it's something that I'm willing to go do. Like I'll tell you the thing that's the most challenging right now and still is, is, is working out. So there's this big, like, and, and I know you've talked about this, like, well, you know, it's going to be so important that people train and, and lift weights to to mitigate the the uh, fat, or, I mean, the muscle loss. But one of the hardest things to do when you're this low energy is to get motivated to lift weights. Of course. And then even when you go lift, go to lift weights, you uh you can't I can't finish a full hour workout. So I'm having to do these kind of micro type workouts, reduce intensity, reduce volume, mm -hmm. and so. Man, I I can't help but as I'm going through this, going like, dude, the average person is the is not going to yeah. know how to do this. No. The average person is going to be like, okay, I, I'm here at the gym, I got I got to get that workout. Then they're going to probably push too hard, no. mm -hmm. overtrain, mm -hmm. make themselves throw and up. They'll or, see the scale go down and be like, cool, this is working. I'll just yeah, keep doing this. Yeah, and yeah. so they're going to. So yeah. there's there, and then I also know too. I've been I've been reading like there's a uh, there is a there's hyper responders. There's non-responders, and then there's people that are s right. responding great, right. and then there's people that are having adverse effects. Yeah. So we've got a whole bunch of categories here. It's not like yeah. everybody takes it, it's all awesome. Not yeah. everybody takes it, it's all terrible. It's not everybody's it getting- It can be uh, an addictive process of like, I'm shrinking, I'm shrinking. I get to the point now where I'm smaller, but my body fat percentage went up, and also, too, I'm more frail. You know, like maybe now, like, my bones aren't as dense as they should be. Like, there's yeah. a lot of these you, but, okay, issues. You're, you're hitting some points there that are important. If, if you look at the data on osteopenia and osteoporosis over the last 30 years, it has gone up in all categories, not just old people, but people in their 40s and 50s. And these are obese people. So what you're going to do is you're going to just eat less. Is that really going to make you healthier? Yes, yes not the full picture. Maybe not. So we need to be so uh, very careful. And then the pharma industry is like this, because here's what's going to happen, already what's happening. Pharma industry, it's a market. So they see where the money's going. And they're like, oh shit, this makes people lose weight. So what's happening is you have, now R&D is getting dumped, just like I said, with opiates. Like the first opiate gets invented, and then you get this whole class of opiates or antibiotics or antidepressants. When they see money you are going to see an incredible representation among the pharmaceutical industry with, with uh, products, you know, peptides, or even pharmaceuticals that act on these receptors because they found now a hot button. Like, this makes people lose weight. My prediction, okay, <clears throat> to your point right now, that what we're going to see is 
you know how loose how remember you guys remember the the marijuana wave when uh when the doctors started coming out to prescribe you your and like you could like say yeah. you, anything yeah. right <laughs> oh i have knee pain yeah. you know glaucoma is a, a big one i PMS. think yeah. i think that the ability to get a a doctor to prescribe you this is going to be anybody. I know right now, like anybody can go order it, yeah. but but I'm saying from a prescription You're standpoint, right. so insurance will right. cover it. Mm. I think it's going to get insured, mm -hmm. and I think it's going to be easy for doctors to prescribe right. it because of all the positive things that they're reading from it, and it's going to get it's going to go crazy. And with that, you're going to see all the things that you're concerned about. We're going to see a lot. Just like, just like something this can like, be mainstream and there's no, can, you know, and everybody is going to take it. And, you're and how many it. people are, have a healthy enough body image to lose weight, feel worse and identify that, yeah. right? Here's what's going to happen to a lot of people. They're going to lose weight. They're going to ignore the fact that their hair's falling out. They feel like shit. They're tired. Can't work out. They're happy. Mm -hmm. I've seen this yeah. a billion times. Well, not a billion times, but obviously so many times with clients that I worked with that I can't imagine the average person who doesn't have, because doctors have their strengths and weaknesses. And one of the weaknesses is doctors are not coaches. Yeah. Your doctor sees you and then they don't see you anymore. And then you're on your own. Then you come back and you revisit and they say, okay, how are you? Oh, I lost 30 pounds. Great job. They're not with you every single day, monitoring, coaching, and saying, this is probably not a good thing. And the medical industry doesn't do a good job of saying no until shit gets so out of hand. So like now you go get an, a prescription for an opiate and they're a little bit more careful yeah. or an antibiotic. Now they're like, wait a minute. Yeah, maybe you don't have they've seen exactly. Yeah, yeah dude. Or, or, or stimulants like Adderall. I, I mean, I, like I, yeah. I predict you're right on that. I think that we're going to see that exactly like that, yeah. which is like I've said it always on the show, like the pendulum swings so hard one way and then it kind of yeah. gets correct the other way. I'm so, so originally I said, I'm going to go 12 weeks here and I might go back on what I'm saying just because uh, I'm, I'm getting so lean that it's like, well, there's, uh, is it really necessary for me to keep going all the way for 12 weeks? Um, I mean, how hard is it for you to hit protein and calories if you really tried? If I really tried, right? And would, I would it, would it feel like forcing yourself? Oh yeah, oh See? yeah, oh yeah, mm. definitely, 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 definitely. So, I mean, to me, that's almost inevitable if you're going to do this. Is like what you're, you're going you're going to lose muscle. That's what like, I'm saying. You're what, not you're not you're not preserving muscle. Yeah. What what previously overweight person is going to feel comfortable force feeding themselves? Right. Yeah. They're not, they're not going to, but here's, here's where I'm heading with this. Right. So, um, now, now that I'm like going on week seven of being in this, I feel like I have a really good grasp of what the beginning looks like, what it feels like when your body yeah. kind of acclimates, what does it look like to try and work out? Like yeah. I have now the thing I'm most curious about is coming off hmm. is what does it look like mm -hmm. when I taper down the, the, the dosage or come off completely. And when I start to get those cravings or I start to desire food again. Those right. And also because I've had this, this I've, I have maybe these new behaviors around food. Did it, did it permanently positively affect some things? Right. Like, do I permanently, like I've told you guys, one of the things that I was trying to work on was like, man, I have really trained myself to like eat these massive portion yeah, yeah, sizes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will I, will I, will I, even when the, the appetite comes back, Will I be more disciplined about eating four tacos instead of 10 tacos? Will I just get a, you know, single burger when I have a burger? Will I just get regular meat instead of double, triple meat all the time? So I'm really curious to see those types of things. And then also, you know, because I've been so low energy with my workouts, do I get this surge of energy because I've refilled my body and then my workouts are great and the, and the intensity and volume starts to go up and then any of those additional calories just go right back to building muscle. And so I've got mm. this really lean base and I pack on muscle. Like, so I'm so curious, like, what's that going to look like? And again, I'm trying to do it without being super, you know. So here, here's a prediction for me, because uh, obviously, if you're going to go on these, I think you should qualify. I think you, this should be a last resort type of deal. I've tried this before. I have a lot of weight to lose. And I'm going to work with a coach who's going to help me with strength training. And I'm going to hit these protein targets. That's what I think should happen. But what I think is probably going to happen from a, with the pharma industry is you're going to see this start to really spread broad prescriptions across the board. Yeah. And then they're going to, the pharma industry is going to come up with, this is what they always do, drugs to offset muscle loss. So what you're going to see is an increase in the production of SARMs, maybe testosterone, maybe growth hormone, more drugs to offset the negatives of this drug. Now, why am I saying this? 
This is what they do. This is historically yeah. what they do. Take this antidepressant. Oh, you get this problem. We made a drug to fix that problem. I oh, you take this. You're 100% gonna, yeah. agree. So it's going to end up being a slew of- I think it's important. The audience knows this too. I yeah. said it, but I think they need to, they need to really- So part of why I think I've had such positive results, uh, aside from the, some of the side, not effect, side effects of being- uh, from an aesthetic point is because I'm on growth hormone and testosterone. And you're also, so I've just, you're also a bot. You were a, yeah, so I, had, I had a lot of muscle already. Yes. I'm taking things that are muscle preserving. And so I am just leaning out and I'm still maintaining. A, now I've lost, I know I've lost muscle, but I am still, but you would have lost. Yeah. But more. I look fit. Like, right. I mean, I, if I took my shirt off, I look like some, even though I'm hardly working out, I still look like someone who's working yeah. out because I've chiseled down. And if I wasn't taking that, it'd be really interesting to see what would be happening to my, because I've actually really plateaued. I dropped 20 pounds and I've been stuck there. Like it's- Your I'm, metabolism adjusted. Yes. Wow. I'm like, I'm literally, and I'm not eat, eating any more. I'm not eating any less. If anything, I'm, I'm probably eating a little tiny bit more because I feel like as, as I've gone through this and I didn't, by the way, I didn't go up in the dose like they, they yeah. want right. you to Right. Well, I mean, I was going to say, isn't that like the protocol then would they just like up your dose to keep you through? Exactly what I, and I get why they do that because I can feel the body adapting to the dosage. And remember how I told you like day six, I start to actually have a little bit of like yeah. an appetite. It's a, I kind of feel it a little bit on day five now. So a little mm. bit sooner, I, like it crushes the appetite on the first three to four days, at least, well, even up to the fifth day until recently, I started to notice that, which has actually been positive for me because it's like, oh, at least I'm getting now two days out of the week now, I feel like I'm eating a decent amount of calories, yeah. right? Where I'm probably hitting my protein intake. And those are also the days it's easier for me to get a good workout in. And so that's kind of really working to my favor. That's why I'm, so one of the things, my critiques from my perspective is uh, the over prescribing dosages, you know, and, and there's a lot of doctors that are playing with this. I was just, I just sent a, a clip to you to a, a podcast interview of a doctor that's prescribing this. And I had talked to another doctor who's they're prescribing. Going lower. Yeah. They're going lower than what they're recommending. They're just going much lower micro dosing or keeping the patients at a, a lower. And I do think that like that experience that Jessica had, I felt that way too. Like the fact that she compared it to a uh, first trimester of pregnancy when Katrina would describe to me how she feels about food and how she, that's how I felt. It's like this kind of borderline nauseous a little yeah, bit and yeah. just food just isn't, that's kind of how I felt. It took about a week for that to kind of get better, but it's, it's still not great. Like food mm. is just, I'm not, I, for seven weeks now, I have not had a meal and Katrina does a, talks about this is really funny because, uh, she thinks I'm, she loves to watch the way I eat because she says that like, I just look like I'm just having the time of my life. Like she says, <laughs> when you eat, especially when you eat things like ice cream, so that she's just like, I'll just watch you. And you don't even know I'm watching you because you're just like, the faces <laughs> that you make when you eat. I'm totally oblivious she's to this, right? turned on. But she's like, I didn't realize <laughs> that I haven't seen that. You know, she's like, I haven't seen that for like seven weeks. Like you just don't even look so like- So that's another thing like, um, you, you know, food, is, and we've said this before GLP ones, food, entire cultures have been created or, or, or you know, built around different foods. Like if I say Italian food, you think of, you know what that looks like, right? Say French food, Chinese food, like you know what that is. Celebrations, um, uh, you know, uh, mourning, connecting, meetings, typically done around food. This has been done for all of recorded human history. Part of that is the, the pleasure that we get from food and connecting with people. If you take that away, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. But it's got to have some other unintended consequences. I, you like know, once you, you separate pleasure from food, I, I actually what does think, that look like? I actually think Sal, though, is, as much as I don't like that going through that process, I think for a lot of people, that's actually a better thing. Because I think a lot of people have become addicted to that mm -hmm. and have abused that. So I do and, too. And so I think the process. So I think kind of like part of that, I think kind of cutting that off has made you like, and I, even myself, I realized like, oh, wow, boy, how much of my eating behaviors are this? driven on this hedonistic oh i wanted to taste well, you see so the companies good. preying off that yes and, yeah. and engineering things to really pull you in a, in a different direction yeah. because of that fact that it's like the, it is a enjoyable pleasurable experience yeah. uh you know to step away from that for a bit i think is beneficial but also to you know you don't want to completely remove that that's how i feel i feel like obviously if it comes back right if it if it was eliminating me forever that would really suck and to your point like that i mean that like imagine right now if uh, the whole world were hyper responders and they were all in glp ones let's just say the modern world right so now nobody really enjoys eating food that much not that big of a deal think about cultures around food and markets around food and connecting with food now think you know two three generations down 
Does that mean we start moving more towards processed food? Because now we don't care as much. You know, so we're like, here's my meal cube that's got the calories. Here's my like like in those those yeah. fake sci-fi movies yeah. where they're like nobody eats food, they just take a pill. The dehydrated, yeah, pill. Is it gonna look yeah. like that? Where all of a sudden, so here's food here's means so nothing? here's the here's the devil's advocate with that, right? Or, or I don't or, know. Is or like, you know, just going back and forth with you, not necessarily that I disagree. No, it's good to Is that um I almost feel like it's it's leveling the playing field against the people, the, the scientists that are making it super hyper sure. I bet you the way I, because, and I want to make it clear too, like food isn't terrible. Like, sure. I, I mean, and what did I do yesterday? I took my, my mother, uh, my mother-in-law and my wife and my son to one of my favorite places to go eat. And it was incredible. And I had very much so that, it was, but it it wasn't just about the food. It gotcha. was actually more about having great conversation and yeah. enjoying the view. And my son and my mom, like, I mean, I don't think it's taking from that at all. In fact, what it actually has done is that the food is less important. It's part of the process of community and 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 sharing and doing stuff like that. But I don't. I'm not like in my plate like this. I'm just like in. You well, know. so here's so, another, here's another thing too, because I don't know, right? I'm just thinking like I'm trying to really expand my head, and I'm just throwing things out there. Here, here's another one. You've, we've seen the data on gastric bypass, which is a medical, this is a surgical medical intervention. It's very effective for weight loss. A high percentage of people, by the way, they have to go through a crazy screening process for, for one, and this is one of the reasons why. People get gastric bypass, they have a spike in uh, abuse of other substances or other behaviors because they're searching for, is it going to cause that? Could it potentially? I know that there's some like, there's some casual, maybe not data, but, but, you know, kind of murmurings about, you know, it, it reduces hedonistic drive generally, but we don't know. The verdict's not not out yet on that. So what if it cuts that out? You get all these people eating less and they turn to other ways. Of so that, it, from my experience, right? Again, I'm only telling from what I've experienced. It's the opposite of that. Okay. So that, which is also what I think is interesting because I thought that might happen, right? Because I'm not getting any pleasure here. Yeah, yeah. Do I need to seek in other places? If anything, it's across the board. If anything, it's just you just you don't have that crazy hedonistic drive for things. And I don't feel like I'm missing out. I only feel like I'm missing out because I know what it's like to eat crushed 10 tacos because right. I'm starving for dinner and Katrina finally made it. And I'm like, oh, but when I really think about those behaviors, it's like I shovel the first four in my face. I'm not enjoying each bite. Yeah. I'm not like mm. being patiently eating. I'm so I was so hungry because I hadn't eaten so long. I'm depressed. You, have you noticed any changes in your in any other high highs that you would get from other things? Or, or like, is it everything down? Um, no, no. Okay. I, I, in fact, the conversation I had last night with Katrina was, I literally just said, man, if I could, if I were to draw up what my life looked like when I got older in retirement, I said the last four days together was the most amazing four days. Okay, good. Like, so I'm having moments like that where I just like, man, we did this with family. And then I, we were with my family, then okay. your family. Then okay. we did this with the car show. And then you and I got to have a night alone. And then we had like... I, and so I'm very, everything else is incredible. Like I'm, there's a lot of positive stuff. The biggest negatives to me, um, and again, how much of that is because I've all, I love the hard workouts and lots of, like my workouts look really different. They look like not a guy who's trying to be super strong, not, like a guy who's just kind of trying to maintain his muscle mass. Like you're like, doing because you have to. Yeah. Like uh, get a couple uh. pull-ups in. You know what I'm saying? I'm not getting a pump. I'm not like into the workout. It's like, hey, I need to touch some weights this week or I know for sure I'm going to lose some muscle. And so I do the bare minimum that I need to do just to do that. And it's I'm, I'm not getting into my workout. So my workout relationship is radically changed uh, on, on how, and I really have to pay attention to how I feel and I'm feeling, oh, also, I know today isn't a, a uh, element commercial or element T, but that has become mandatory. I'm so low on calorie. I one of the things I your did, sodium's low too. I man. noticed that yeah. if I miss that, that actually has one of the most dramatic effects on my energy feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. so I have been. That's able like to, when you fast. Same thing. I know, and I should know. I know. I know better. Like I know that, and so I started taking it right away. But I've had days where I've been inconsistent, and I've been able to connect the dots of like, oh shit. Yeah, because food is down, so sodium. Yeah, carbs are down, water's out of your body. Yeah, yeah and sodium. even more dramatic because they're the only foods I'm eating mostly really healthy foods. So it's really tough to, to, hit, to hit that sodium intake. As so. Speaking of uh, speaking of partners, um, every once in a while we work with a partner who has a product that's so that's so effective that you have to tell your family or friends like this is gonna this is gonna knock you out or whatever. So Lunar is the product oh, you're yeah. talking about. Oh, bro, <laughs> I love I love that it. is 
an occasional product uh, for us because it's so effective. It's pretty powerful. Yeah. yeah. You you take the four tablets it recommends. You're going to sleep, dude. Yeah. yeah. You're out. Yeah. You are going nine. nine. All he needs two. Yeah. Are you going down to two? Yeah, I went down to That's two. That's Jessica too. Yeah. She uses two. That way I'm not like as great because you can be groggy a bit in yeah. the morning if you go. You know what's much. funny too about it, and you pointed this out. I did not think about this at all. I would I, at all did I think about this. He he. You know, Mike made it chewable tablets and i remember when we first saw it, i'm like stupid just make it pills who cares about chewable? <laughs> and you made a point i thought was brilliant <clears throat> you don't want to drink water dude an hour before bed because yep. then you got to wake up and yep. pee chewable pee. tablets yep. requires no water i didn't even think really of that. smart that's I why i didn't even that. think of that that's why it's become uh, i've never been really consistent the only other one I, I would use is our our ned droppers back when we we're doing that but that because it doesn't require water either um but I've never been really consistent with any supplement aids because of the fluids. Yeah. Because I'm already it's already a struggle with me to not drink water that much water. So having to take a pill and wash it down, you have to drink a decent amount of water. I can't just like throw four pills in my mouth and it and just a little sip. I gotta like drink so it feels like it goes all the way down. Yeah. So I just it, it makes me pee. pee more. So having the chewable tablets, man, I I used it last night. I use that. I, that's become a, a a a very consistent product that I I wouldn't say very consistent where I'm every night. But it's my go-to. If I know, like, I'm gonna have a hard time sleeping, or we've been going all day, or I, I need to get to sleep, that's been my little hack of is, awesome. is using Lunar for sure, dude. I gotta tell you guys, my uh, my my one and a half year old, right, my little daughter. Uh, you know, I'm very involved with my little kids in comparison to how I was with my older ones when they were little. I just worked too much. I just wasn't around, so I'm very involved. And I always wanted that. You know, I don't know. In my head, I always wanted like daddy's little girl. I always want a little girl, my little daughter to be stuck to dad or whatever. It's working. It's happening. It's happening. I was playing with her this weekend and she's just holding my face and she's kissing me and she's playing with my ears and, she, and I'm sending videos to Jessica and Jessica's like, she doesn't do that with me. I'm like, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> Hell yeah. She's uh -huh. just working, dude. That's awesome. So she, she, Jessica's still number one. So she still, you know, loves mom more. But I think I might edge her out soon. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. I want to be, yeah, I want to be the, I, I mean, it's, I be the it's very possible. I think that it's there, like with Max, um, you know, there's, there's certain things obviously goes as mom, but she would probably tell you this. Uh, she would probably say like, I have this impact on him where and she just, this happened to us the other day where we, what do we do? Oh, we had a dinner on, what was that Tuesday last week or Wednesday last week? We, so we had a, a dinner, we worked late and then we had something else that we worked late and Katrina's pieced it together. If, and I've been so consistent with getting home early and spending, you know, four hour plus blocks with my son and being a part of the whole bed pot process that he's been trained that that's like daddy time with me. And he, and so when I travel or I'm gone, she goes, his, his behavior changes. He's not, he's like, oh. she, and she's like, I know that the third morning, like if you do that to him, if he like one day, not a big deal. If you do it two days in a row to him, especially it's actually almost worse when I'm there. If I'm home and he doesn't get it because I'm just working or busy. If I'm traveling, he can, she can disconnect him and it just be, and then he's excited to see me when we get back. But otherwise she goes, I know that morning getting up for school is going to be a challenge because he's just a crab. He starts to be a crab when he doesn't get that. Isn't that crazy? Time. Yeah. And she's like, now how does that make you feel? It's like, there's this mixed feelings, right? Party's like, Oh my kid. And the other part of like, Oh, I mean, shit. probably like her. Cause she's like, you know, it makes her life difficult. She goes, but I love it. She yeah. goes, I know that he's so attached to you and you guys have built such a bond that that's how I, she goes, that's how I snap out of it is. And she goes like you where this is the same thing. Like, if I'm mentally prepped for you're going to be a pain in the ass, I can handle your your attitude, right? She's like, I can handle. She's like, when I know we're going somewhere where you're not going to like it, you're not going to be happy, and I prep okay you. Yeah, and I prep you. One, you're 10 times better when I prep you. Two, I'm mentally ready for your little comments and your little shit, your little attitude. Like, <laughs> so she's like, your son is exactly the same way. So it's like, if I'm mentally prepped that, okay, tomorrow morning, my son's going to be. hilarious. Yeah, she's like, then I'm fine, and I actually can see the positive side. I, I love that you That's guys funny. are bonded like Dude, that so much. So we have, I mean, our whole house is a bit of a disaster zone it's like just chaos and but it was worth it because like these kids came over and like i told you guys about the sort of neighborhood kid group that mm -hmm. it's like everett's like good friends with but they just decided upon themselves to just start digging a hole like out of nowhere like it just I remember that just age. dig holes just dig holes to dig well, holes. that's so fun i know <laughs> right i, I forgot all it. about that what They're is like, that why why do us what's go, down there i have no you idea know? you don't know what's gonna be i don't even remember why we did it's a mystery either. i just remember we think about it now it. as adult men yeah. if we had the energy because yeah know. Imagine if we want to, I'd be, I'd be kind of like interested. Dude, and they like, always find something. Like See? there was like weird bugs, you know, that, yeah, that they found funny. that were like crawling out and like 
uh, you know, and then the dogs went over there looking and the cats and like, you know, the whole crew of everybody like surrounding this, this hole, you know, how they're getting they mud everywhere, dude. Did they make it real deep or how, how it's far did they deep, go? dude. They right. kept going, like ever got in there and he's just like, you know, digging away. And, and I was like, this is all great, but this is going to have to be filled back in. He knows that. You know that right? <laughs> and he was like almost crying. He's like, dad, we worked so hard on this. <laughs> Why would you do this? Well, what are you going to do with the hole over there? Like, well, I can't like, uh, like next weekend, like, and I'm uh, unfortunately going to be gone. But like, uh, my other friend was going to use my house to, to have a party for his like two year old. And I'm like, I can't have a hole this big. Right, two <laughs> all these little two year olds <laughs> running around my property. You know, this is, this is like a hazard, yeah. you know, he's just like, Pfft. Well, can I at least, you know, he's like trying to make like, can I make a pond out of it or something? Yeah. Like put like a tarp on there. And it's like, like, what are, what are we doing here? You know, but I love it. It's like, he's just experimenting. And I but, got an idea for you. Yeah. Have him bury something really cool in there. And then he'll want to cover it. And he'd be like, we'll check it out. You know, like 10 years. It's not now. bad. Yeah. Those yeah. kids do that. You guys yeah. do one of those time capsules. Do a yeah. time capsule. With them. Actually, that would be a fun project with uh, okay. him. Okay. Do yeah, a time capsule. Like that. Yeah, yeah, that would actually be really cool. Get, do like a little time capsule. You know, we did. So Just uh, treasure later on in life. Yeah. Yes, dude. And then you can go dig it up 10 years later and it's so fun. We'll actually, try- bro, that'd be hell fun. You should that do like a, cool. have him like write a letter to himself. Maybe you write a letter to him. Get like a picture that's current and and whatever and like maybe a thing you know and then you like do a time. My capsule. cousin and I did yeah. that, but we didn't do a time capsule. We were just we just went my grandparents' backyard gold to bloom in there, just and so. we just dug up a bunch of he man. We put them in hella deep, and then as adults, we're like, I wonder if we go back there. <laughs> yeah. This is the most valuable thing yeah, he had. Like, oh my god, it's still here. Find yeah. like a cool baseball card that's all you know. What I'm saying they can end up being worth a bunch of money later on. You know, yeah, I just, it's just glass baseball case. cards are in my head. So I got to tell you guys a story. So I know I've brought it up on the show, or I've definitely have at least told you guys uh, that I have like one of my best friends, my best friend, like that we go way all the way to child, young, young childhood, right? He, uh, he's grown ass man and he's hardcore into like collecting ba- basketball, baseball cards, right? It's like just so crazy to me too. Like, and it's not like he has a ton of disposable income either. And yet he's the guy who like goes down to Target or Walmart on the Tuesdays when they get the shipment you know, gets there right away. They open, oh, buys wow. all the boxes that they have of cards and goes home and opens them all up and stuff like that. And just, he's, and I, and he's been doing this. And he's people been, have the time to do this? Bro, right? it's, I know that too, right? He's, and he's got two kids, busy, saying, work, like, works that, like crazy. It's That's his like, thing, dude. It's yeah, his hobby, right? He is super, super busy. He's busier than I am by far. And yet he still finds time to do stuff. And he's always trying to get me on on too. Like, bro, you got to go do this. You got to get this. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I don't have the time to add another hobby like this. Like, especially that hobby of all the things. So anyways, it's always been like this thing that I give him shit about because he's, he's really ramped it up the last two years. He calls me yesterday. Motherfucker pulled a card that's worth like $20,000. For reals? <laughs> yes. He has a, he has a card that is he going to, now he's going to sell it. Is he going to make the money? Yeah. So he's going to sell it. So he just, so he just had it. So you get these cards that, and you'll see they're, they're graded and you get them graded by either PSA or, or Beckett. Right. And you, and basically if you have a card, that's already a card that you think is going to be worth money, you ship it into one of these companies and they professionally grade it, you know, bolt it in, yeah, seal yeah, it. Yeah. And that card is sealed with a, a so like mint a, condition. Yes. Or with a score. And it's a, and then there's a basic score, which is like PSA 10 or Beckett's 10. And then they send you like an, an email certified email that comes with it. That is also like a breakdown of every aspect color, centering, corners, and then that's all scored. And so if you have a rare card where there's only, say, like a 1,000 total of them, and then it scores like a 10 center, 10 condition, something like that, like that's a that's a card that could end up being. And so he got a Wimby, which is the kid who's going to get a rookie rookie of the year this year, who is projected. He's a guy I told you it's 7-6 seven, seven, and can oh, yeah, dribble the ball yeah, like yeah. I was telling you guys the other day, right? So he's going to get rookie of the year for sure. He might even get defensive player of the year. So that's crazy, both of those. And he looks like he's going to be like one of the craziest players we've ever seen. And he got a like one-off card, dude. He already wow. got a rare card as well. And then it got scored a 10 out of 10 on everything. Wow. Now, it's, will he find a buyer, do you think? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> that same card that got a 9.5 rating yeah. just sold for $10,000. So somebody bought it. So yeah. someone's going to buy this. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So he's, And he hasn't spent yeah, nearly- Yeah, that's a crazy he, thing to buy at that height, right? You, you, your, your thought is that it's going to be worth he tried more to, later. So he, go, he, you know, he, he, he told me, he says, hey, man, he goes, it's, I, I know I need to sell this. I have to sell this. 
He goes, but I'd love to keep it in the family. You should, you should buy it. I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I love you to death, bro. But here's a problem. Yeah, with I'll it. give you a thousand dollars. Well, here's what I told him. I said, yeah, I would buy. I 100 would buy a ten thousand dollar Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, uh, Michael Jordan card because they're already done with their career and they're already valued at that. That card will only yeah, this go kid up. Always, yeah, go yeah up. this kid breaks yeah. his leg next year. Yeah, totally. And that twenty thousand dollar card is worth nothing. I mean, if he doesn't, wow. if he doesn't, cont so his part of why it's it his, it's projected so high right now is they're projecting his career. Speaking of which, totally. speaking of which, are OJ Simpson's cards worth? Were they oh worth more God, I bet you after worth. everything that happened with his with this trial? I would assume. Or did they go down in value? I bet it went up. But I, I bet, bet you too. Up. I actually don't. I bet know when OJ answer. Simpson. That'd be weird card. though if it affected the, his the value of his like trading cards. I think it probably would go up because of all the controversy and yeah. all that. Craziness. It will, I would think so too. Right. But I don't know. That's actually a really he just, maybe, didn't he just maybe pass away. Google yeah, Doug could find did. out. Yeah, he just he passed died away. from cancer. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. Look that up, Doug. That's a really interesting question. If it, if look up OJ Simpson trading card or mm. rookie card value up value. up or down after murder. <laughs> or a, a, a legend <laughs> murder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember, I think at this point, we could say he murdered. Remember, if the glove <laughs> doesn't dead, fit, guys. Yeah, you know, you yeah, got it's it like, Come on, there's yeah. no leads. Yeah, that's actually. That's a, I don't know. That's a really good question. Normally, when normally so, when shit happens, well, but, and even just when someone passes, when, yeah. when someone passes and and they've been re retired or when they retire, that's why too. I told my buddy, I was like, you have to sell this. By car. the way, you guys ever watch? I know this is not cool to say, but you ever watched old film of OJ Simpson as a, when he played? Mm -hmm. That guy was insane. Oh, yeah. he was. Oh my really god, really talented. Yeah, insane. One of the best. Yeah. What are you finding there, Doug? Well, I am seeing that after his death, it, the value's gone up. Also, uh, okay. wow. yeah. So probably. then it most likely did because if it went up probably. even more after he died, it yeah. was probably up after even after all that. All that. Yeah, that's a. That's a. I mean, two ways you can make a lot of money, right? Is like either you're notorious for something terrible or something good. You know, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna steal this moment of being on sports talk because we rarely get this to, to, to give you <laughs> yes. something, Justin. Uh, on uh, Peacock, which is a streaming service, I don't know if you have it or not. Um, it uh, there was a documentary a joke in there somewhere, but I'm, I'm I know gonna, was, there was, was a documentary. Do you know who who owns Peacock? Uh, NBC, Com Comcast. Oh, okay, so Comcast That's a good bought guess, it. Yes, uh, well, NBC it's also the, yeah. It's, yeah the, I believe they own NBC like the also. Thing. Oh, okay, so, okay. Yeah. Um, Comcast. That was there when the whole streaming war and they were losing like crazy. Mm -hmm. That was their counter, and wow. so they've actually they, they, they got some. Remember, they got some of the football games this year, so they're yep. you know finding a way. It'd be interesting to see their what happened with the company, like how much they took a dive, and then if they're rebounding. Anyways, yeah, rambling. Sorry. Uh, twenty twenty two. This documentary was released. I released. I just watched it last night. It was so good. It was uh, Joe Montana's. Oh, Montana. Oh, so, and it's on There's Peacock. somebody I, I there's one. Uh, there's yeah, an Montana, athlete I love. The story, his whole story is like, uh, you know, he's he was an only child. His parents were like, and they grew up Silicon Valley. So it's a really, it's a really, really good. I well heard done. he's a really big entrepreneur. Dude, and, oh yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's done. And they, man, you know, they're not a lot of kids. I know Doug is, is rare like this too. Like, you know, if you, you grew up way back in the day, uh, that actually have footage, like they had a lot of footage. There's a lot of footage of him. Like when he was a baby, when he was mm. a young kid, so I, I, I you, not a lot of people that are that age have a lot of good actual like video uh, of them. So the documentary has a ton of like old like his dad and him in the yard like throwing the football at a tire that's going back and oh, forth. That's and like a kid. Yeah, that's it's like, so nostalgic. For oh, me, it's dude. so cool. And yeah. to see that from somebody like that, and to see the kind of and you get to actually see the relationship that he has with them. So it was sweet. Yeah, it's that's worth awesome. watching if we'll you have. All right, one more thing. I'll I'll I'll, I'll say to take a left here, but I ran out of the Intera. Hair is that why you, is why you're looking silver. Listen, no, I don't know. <laughs> Am I looking more silver? <laughs> you do look more silver. So today. I ran out and used it for a while. And you know, you ever, you know, there's some products you use, and then at first you're like, I noticed something. Then you use it for mm. a while, and you're like, is it doing anything? Stopped using it for a while, and my hair started falling out. Oh wow! Yeah, and I got my hands on some more, thankfully, and started using it again. Really? So you got to keep, yeah, you got to keep using it, but it works. It definitely works because when I, I use I it, I feel like that almost with all those products like that. Like their skincare one too. If like when you use it within two days, you notice a big difference. Do you think stop using it and you notice? Do you think there's a negative thing? Uh, like or is that more of a like? So because I felt this way too using products like this, where I would use it and then I was like, is it working? Is it not working? And then I'd not use it, and then all of a sudden I'd yeah. see like thinning really bad, yeah. and I'd be like, oh shit. Like, and is this I, the normal trajectory and that's, I'm stopping so it? So that's what yeah. I was wondering. I'm like, do yeah. you, is, is your, your I opinion on this that 
you were actually like really on this route of losing, 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 and then by taking it, it's yeah. like stalled it, yeah. and then it, that picks it back up? Or did the product have some sort of a negative effect that, no. okay, so you think that's Yeah, what? because peptides, uh, the peptides that they use are drivers, so the skin peptides, for example, are drivers of skin regeneration, blood flow, um, you know, boosting uh, certain nutrients like copper, like in the scalp, for example, which is, you know, good for hair loss. So it's basically kind of, it's stopping or slowing down what could potentially happen, kind of turbocharging everything. And you go off of it, you go back to where you were yeah. before. Yeah. You uh, you know, their their skin product has the GHK in it, doesn't I know. it? Yeah. Katrina, like, that's become Is it like- the copper? Uh, yes. Yeah. That's become a go-to, like, like face cream for her. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah Courtney loves that, too. Oh, mm -hmm. Jessica's selling it to all her friends. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, literally, it's not cheap, either. No, no it's uh, not. No, it's and not. She's but effective, it's, it's effective yeah. as shit. Oh, you, listen. Yeah. You notice it by day two. So she's having her friends. Her friends will come over, and she'll be like, put this on right, right now. Just and then before they leave, put it on again. And then we'll call back, like, okay, you know, I need to use this. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, oh, it works. Wow. It Dude, works a long time ago, we were talking about, like, proposals on the show, like how we you know, propose to her wife, whatever. Yeah. And like, you know, funny stories with that. And, uh, it's been a while. I don't know if you guys have seen anybody like in public in a long time, kind of do that where all of a sudden it's this sort of big display. And like, I've seen it at a ball game. Yeah. I've seen it at different places. This one sort of takes the cake for me. I hadn't, uh, uh it took me by surprise. So uh, over the weekend I was at this like kind of expo and, um, on stage, they actually had like a little bodybuilding show there and so this guy was up there and you know jacked guy he was in his little you know skimpy um uh black um Bikini. thong yeah it wasn't even like a regular it was a thong yeah it was a thong it wasn't even wait, like wait, a, a speedo yeah there's something you're skimming over here what expo were you at what is this? <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna ask you i was like this is the new thing like dudes are are cheeking out you know on stage not and, really instead of like i don't um, think so yeah it shouldn't be a Thong, but it, I mean, they do have a, or they'll pull it up to show their glutes, but it yeah, you might like see a, them do that. They turn around the back and they'll like slide to the side so you can see the striation in their yeah. glutes. But Kyle, so, you can back me up. You were it was, there. It was, pretty it was oh, thong. Wow. It was what, thong. what kind of expo was it? Was it a fitness it, expo? It was like, it was, yes, yeah, fitness, but it was mainly like more like sports. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So okay. we were kind of like doing a little bit of investigation, see if it was, because it was local. It was like in, not a lot Santa of places Clara. to hide the ring though, right? With the, That's <laughs> what I was wondering. First of all, where did he get it? I'm like, <laughs> and then, well, he just sort of has the mic and he, he brings like his fiance up, you know, his little girlfriend up on the stage and then, and then drops down, kind of does the thing. Really? Yeah. And for everybody and everybody's just like, you know, like congratulations, you know, it's like a big moment and like, you know, you want, but I'm like, really like here like yeah, you're not wearing anything yeah. and that's like a it, i've been to a lot of like, shows wow, and i've never seen anybody do that that'd be a weird time <laughs> you gotta dude. be really confident like, she's gonna say yes yeah so you're exactly you're all thonged out and you're like i mean you'll okay, put so yourself so, out there if you're, if you're the guy that you decide to do that like what's your because th okay at least this is how i thought about my proposal i thought about what would my wife love like what would my what would like so like what the way I did it was not how I would like to do it or how I would do it. It was just like she's such what a she like she's such a family totally. oriented person yeah. that you know and in, on Thanksgiving is when we get everybody together went from all over yeah. and so I knew that getting down on a knee in front of her family would be very meaningful. Not what I wanted to do. That's uh, how I thought. So what is he thinking that <laughs> exactly that, exactly like, my thought process. I was like, did you think of this all <laughs> like on your own? Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. you think about what she wanted? You ever hear the story of the there was a woman there was a man who was going to propose to his girlfriend and he came home early from work to surprise her. And had her whole family in their apartment waiting. Yeah. And she came home with one of her coworkers. She oh. Like, oh my God. So they were <laughs> hiding. She comes around. Shut and starts, up. That's not real. I think it's, I don't know. Maybe it's a, it's that a That can't legend. be real. Like, she we're was working like, on a project the other she, No, no. She came around. He was hiding. They were all hiding. And then they started making out and they turned the light on. And then, <gasps> no, hey, listen. No I don't know if it's an urban legend, but I, I, I that, heard about something like that. That can't be That true. sounds like old school. Didn't that happen? <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's like, like, I feel like, that's like <laughs> a movie. I think, I think you like talking about some bang. movie. That's yeah. I think it is in a movie, actually. That sounds Could crazy. Could you imagine? Yeah. Oh, oh, the heart of I mean, the, the, oh, the timing the of that, knife. like of the chances of that. like the, I have seen videos, though, where people are on the altar. I have seen videos on on YouTube. Where they're on the altar, and then the, the the husband pulls, and they're doing their their uh, what is it called when they vows read, their vows, and the guy brings up, and I saw one with a girl do this too, where they bring up the vows, but instead they read text messages that they printed from the other person, and you can see that the 
the bride was like, uh, 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 and it was with one of the groomsmen, I think. Like to say, I, I'm not getting married. Yeah, like I got I some caught stuff you to read. Yeah, and he just starts reading Shut text messages. Up. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah, there's gosh. videos like That's that you can find. So there's more gangster. than one where they get confronted on the altar. I wouldn't do that. I feel like some of like, those are like, what's the majority of those do you think that are staged? Right? I know. Like, Cause I just don't trust. Like who's really going to go through like all of that to display that. I saw like uh, Mark Bell's shared a, a post. I, he's so funny. That's how I, I default to that now. I almost, I know. Cause it's so much. I like it. There was this shit. guy. You're going to get was, so many views. There obviously. was this guy that was doing, he did a video on his thing. And I know this is Mark's been posting some of this all the time just to get controversy and people talk about it. And it was like this trash guy. And he was like, you know, like music was playing, the truck's going, he's running and he's doing cartwheels and throwing the trash in there. And it's like, everyone's like, oh, it's so cool to love, you know, love whatever you do work and the time about all the positive. And I'm like, those trash bags were all perfectly wrapped. We're all stacked. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. that doesn't ever happen. You ever, dude, you guys ever go out to your know. house and look at all the trash cans? Like they're not yeah. ever like perfectly stacked That's or the true. bags are all wrapped. All I'm like, that was so staged for a video. Dude, dude. Anytime I do a parkour video like that, I'm like already like, you know, going through, I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm yeah. like staging it out. Cause there's no way I'm just going to randomly just jump off something. And it's so hard to get excited. That's how I feel. It's so hard to get excited about it. Like a cool video now. Cause I'm like, man, everybody is chasing going viral so much that it's like it's all fake they dude. practice all this stuff a thousand times before they even post it out and, there. and i mean yep. think about how many times stuff has happened in your life that was crazy and you didn't have a camera recording you every time that's yeah. every time i've yeah. never had like oh yeah dude, yeah got it. yeah yeah exactly. yeah no i take a i take a lot of pride in the fact that i think my life outside of instagram is way better than my life yeah. in instagram yeah. which is the opposite i think of a lot of people today i think a lot of people hype up everything that is anything cool in their life on Instagram and then inside they're like depressed yeah. and sad and oh, not really terrible. doing shit. Yeah, that's no, terrible. it is unfortunate. That's terrible. All right, so the shout out should be, I think, that we continue to talk about our live event. We're getting all kinds of messages. People are excited. Let's go to Vegas! We haven't done a live event uh, in years since uh, right before COVID. So we're going to be in Vegas, uh, what is it, June 15th. And we're going to meet fans and have a great time. And you can go to mindpumplive.com, sign up, come meet us, hang out. It's going to be a good time. It's at, it's the, at the Bellagio. It's at the Bellagio. And Doug, we're staying there, right? Yes. Yeah. So we're, we'll be staying there too. So it's, uh, uh, the, I think the VIP are sold out already. So I think the VIP. Oh, wow. Yeah. Last I saw, there was one ticket left and that was like two days ago. So I don't know if there's any of those left. General admission though, there still is. They're also we also set up to where we have a bartender, so it'll be you know, we'll have some so twenty one and over, right? So you need to be twenty one to be in there to be uh, drinking and, and hanging out with all of us. But uh, to be in Vegas and do this, I'm I'm super. It's pumped. be awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun time. Seed is the world's best probiotic. Look, by now you probably know the benefits of probiotics. They can help your skin, your digestion. Studies show it helps with mental state, anxiety, depression. It can give you more energy. It can actually help you build more muscle and burn more body fat. It's true. This is all backed by studies. But Seed is the best probiotic in the world. There's a lot of companies out there with probiotics. Nobody compares to Seed. They're the leaders in the industry. This is why they're the only probiotic company we really work with. Go check them out. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code 25 mind pump for 25% off your first month's order of Seed's daily symbiotic. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Rachel from Texas. Hey, Rachel. How can Hi, we Rachel. help you? Morning. Hi, how are y'all doing? Thank you for having me. Good. You got it. How can we help you? So my question today for you guys um, is to see if we could talk about how to approach diet and exercise as I come off of the GLP-1 agonist. Specifically, I'm using, have been using terzepatide uh, and I've, reached a weight that I'm happy with. Um, and so I'm tapering off. I've just begun that process of tapering off of the peptide. And so I'm hoping for some guidance on how to approach my diet and nutrition going forward. Um, I'll just summarize a little bit of the backstory that was in my email. I was introduced to lifting about 11 years ago through CrossFit classes. Um, I was 40 at the time. I've been relatively consistent. You know, I, I miss here and there because of family scheduling or injuries or whatnot. But overall, for a decade, I've been pretty consistent. Um, I really enjoy lifting of all kinds. I like traditional. I like Olympic lifting. Um, 
I did a strongman competition and that was a real kick in the pants too. Um, like many people, I've lost weight through diet and exercise. Then I regain the weight. Then I lose some more weight. Then I would regain the weight. Uh, and that was the driving factor for why I chose to start the Terzepatide, which I used for the last eight months. Um, so I have good nutrition. I eat clean. I know how to track my food. Um, I worked with a nutrition coach, coach for a while. So I felt like I, I did all the things and I did all the foundation work, I guess you would say. Um, but I don't want to take Terzepatide forever. I think that I can get off of it if I have the right plan going forward. Um, I love yeah. this question. So we're at. I love this question. Rachel, do you know that I'm going through this right now? Yes. So, I've heard a couple of the episodes where you've mentioned it. Yeah. So I'm on week four right now. I'm blown away by what I see. And I don't, I, I, I'm not sure. I think I've communicated this on the podcast that my intent is to go through this uh, like a client versus being a trainer. So I'm really kind of just letting it take its course and you know, when I'm hungry, make good balanced choices. I'm not really actually right. overly tracking and, and being afraid that I'm under, I already know I'm under consuming protein. And I'm, and I've already been thinking about what is it going to be like when I get off and how am I going to reintroduce? Um, so I think the guys and I will be able to give you some pretty good advice right now. I think I'm going to be able to give you really good advice over the next two to three months. So make sure you're listening and staying, right. staying tuned. I, qu couple questions, really curious because you're so much further ahead than I am. Uh, tell me a little bit about, uh, how it felt for you. What, did you have a lot of success? Did you go, did you drop down in body fat percentage significantly? What did you notice? Like what are maybe some of your fears of coming off of it? Like, tell, tell me a little bit more. So, um, at my heaviest, I was 240. I'm 5'10. Uh, at my heaviest, I was 240. Um, I was, uh, I was creeping up around 230 when I started the trisepatide. I, I had lost some of the weight and then I started trisepatide. So, yes, the weight came off. I'm at 184 now. Wow. So, I've lost a significant amount of weight. Um, for me, it came off a little bit slower than, you know, the, um, health providers, I, I went through a clinic and the health providers would meet with me and stuff. And they, you know, would say, well, the terzepatide people are losing three or four pounds a week. And that was never the case for me. I lost a couple pounds a week generally, but, um, my body fat percentage came down from, it was 28 when I started. Um, and now it's like 21 to 22. And that's, I, I don't have access to, um, the DEXA scans and things like that. So those are, those are trends that I follow on my little at home impedance scale. Yeah, so yeah. the number might not be perfectly accurate, but the trend was consistent. Um, that's okay. So that's, yes, that's, good, lost good, of, that's good info. That's really lost good. A lot of fat. Um, I carry a lot of muscle. So that was part of, I guess, of my comfort level with deciding to try the trisepatide is that I felt like I was, I was, very, I was always very muscular and I was very strong, but I just couldn't, I couldn't shed the, the fat. And so, um, definitely I've lost muscle. Like I just chose going into it that that's going to be something I have to accept. Um, but I tried to minimize that obviously, you know, I tried to keep lifting and, um, taking creatine and, you know, I can't hit my protein targets. Like, yeah, I know, I know that we I should. Know. And I, I yeah, I heard it's, you say that. On yeah, the, it's like impossible. It feels impossible just because you're not hungry. Yeah. I think I think uh, yeah. supplementing with protein is probably essential while you're on. Now that I'm hearing more people's experiences, oh yeah, it's I so hard it, to hit. I, I I would even go one step further. I actually was thinking about this this morning, uh, and it's ironic because we've shit on the supplement for so long. If there was ever a time I would consider taking BCAAs, <laughs> doing your yeah. it's because I, there's yeah. times where I don't even want to take a shake. Even taking a light shake wow. is like just, just doesn't sound good. On it <laughs> yeah. Constantly, yeah. So to have you know even that in there mm -hmm. to mitigate that so, a little bit. So Rachel, I'm gonna, I'm 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 trying to do a little math here just to see what the lean body mass loss was during that period. So you said almost 230. It would, is 228 more accurate, or can you give me an accurate number? Would you say when, when you started? Um. No. <laughs> okay. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll go off of 230. Yeah. Okay. We'll go off 230 and you said about 28% body fat. 
um, which leaves you with 165 pounds of lean body mass. And now you're 185 at 21%. Is that yes. correct? Okay. Yes. And, and that leaves you with 146 pounds of lean body mass. So about 20 pounds of lean body mass loss based off of this, you know, give or take, right? Because you're using electronic competitors. Right. Now during that right. period, and, and I'm asking this because it's going to help me give you advice uh, moving forward, like how we're going to and how we're going to move forward without rebounding, mm -hmm. which is the fear. The fear is you know you go off this right. peptide, and old you know old patterns start to you know reemerge. Um, during that period of time, were you you were lifting still? So you said you were still training, correct? Yes. Okay, but and way less. Okay. Way less. Okay. So tell me about that. What yeah. were you doing before? And then what were you doing during? And why did you lift less? Was it the energy? Was your energy different? Well, so prior to starting it, I, I just attended CrossFit classes. Okay. Um, I had done um, the strongman stuff a few months previous with a, another friend of mine, a trainer outside of the CrossFit group I go to. Um, but I wasn't doing that when I started the trisepatide, I just was going to cross it. Okay. Um, and it very early on became apparent that that intensity was not going to work. Okay. So it was, a, it was an appropriate of, scale back then. Yeah. So I scaled back the intensity basically. Um, that was smart. And the, the actual weights too. Like I don't, I, I don't go into to the gym and say, Oh, I'm going to PR today or I'm going to, I'm going to lift, you know, the heaviest weight during this workout. I just, I can't keep up. I don't want to do that. I don't want to feel like I'm going to barf at the end. Uh, now, during the period when you were on, because it was an eight month period. So while you were on the trisepatide, um, did you have any, um, I guess, discovery into why uh, it was so challenging before with food? It, were there any issues tied to overeating for you that you were able to identify now that the urge to overeat was taken away from the trisepatide? Like, was there any processes or behavior, um, you know, were you know, kind of self reflection during that period, or was it just I'm just I'm just eating less? So I I went into it. I feel like I went into it with my eyes wide open. I did as much research as I could do, which, as you know, there's not a whole ton of stuff out there because it's yeah. so new for the public. Um, so I would suspect that I was overtraining and under eating. Mm. I didn't start listening to y'all's podcast until I was already in this process. Uh, but definitely, um, you know, I, I probably was eating <laughs> a big day for me was 1500 calories mm. and, and I would gain weight. Um, and I was going to CrossFit, you know, four days a week. So, uh, Going into this process, I intentionally scaled that back. Um, obviously, the calories went down because it, just, I can't eat that much. Uh, but I definitely became more aware of what foods I was eating and what foods made me feel a certain way. Uh, okay. I, so I don't, I didn't really have an overeating problem. I think that, uh, I mean, I would make poor alcohol choices on the weekends and I definitely like my ice cream at night, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So that, that all went away. Yeah. Um, Did the, and I'm hoping that I have habits so that those, those habits don't come back. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So that's interesting. So the terzepatite affect your alcohol consumption as well? Drastically. Yes. Mm, interesting. So it's, it's so wild. That's it's interesting. So, so okay. Wild, so, like, all right. So now I have some more information. I think I know what direction yeah, I would, I would. So yeah. because of the lean body mass loss and because of the potential for just general appetite now to go up. Okay. But well, now that you're off the GLP one appetite might go up, I would treat this like a reverse, like I would do a reverse diet. I would do traditional strength training two or three days a week, full body maps anabolic. I would, yeah. Maps anabolic would be a great program. Um, I would, I would, hit my protein targets. So aim for grams of protein, uh, you know, one gram per pound of target body weight, whatever that is for you. So if you like where you're at, then try and stay within the 160, 185 grams and be very consistent. If you need to supplement, do so, but try and get it from whole natural foods and then focus on getting stronger in the gym. And what we should see is a metabolism boost with some lean body mass gain and some additional fat loss from the metabolism boosting. Now, if we don't structure it that way, what what may happen, and I don't know because I don't have a ton of experience with people coming off GLP-1s, what may happen is the old patterns start to reemerge when you take this, you know, this intervention away. So I think if we 
structure it in the way that I'm saying and stay try to stay away uh, aware of what's going on. What we what we may get is this nice lean body mass build, metabolism boost, and a nice fat loss, muscle gain kind of transfer. If you don't structure it, um, I'd be afraid that the old patterns may reemerge. Now, what's interesting is my conversations with like Dr. Seeds, who's one of the lead you know researchers in this field, says that it 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 tends to rewire the brain. So it's not as simple as behaviors just coming back. I am skeptical with that because I know how uh, behaviors, I think, aren't just rooted in, in brain structure. I think that there's, it's more complex than that. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't have a ton of experience. But if I were you, I would structure it in this way. And then the one thing that I would stay very strict on would be the alcohol. Because yeah. I, I, that right there has no benefit. Mm -hmm. There's no benefit to that calorically, right. you know, metabolically, it's just pure, you know, whatever. Sleep, all kinds of stuff. I, yeah. I, I think the answer is actually is, is relatively easy. Adhering to it is what I don't know yet personally, how hard that's going to be. So what's going to happen when you get at the appetite's going to come back. And as long as you resist the desire to go to the ice cream and alcohol and just make sure you make a healthy choice, I think we're going to see nothing but benefits. I think following a program like MAPS and a bulk, so having a nice program shift into something that's ideal for where you're at, you allowing yourself to eat more food, but just making sure you're going after the protein first and making good choices is going to be all the difference. Yeah. Because then it's going to prioritize those additional calories to building muscle. Yeah. And you're going to be very happy with, with to Sal's point, it should actually build the metabolism. And we might even lean out as you gain calories. Yeah, your your your, your body weight might, might yeah. actually stay right around where it's at, but you actually find yourself getting leaner as you build more muscle and the metabolism starts to burn more body fat. Uh, and that's what a really good reverse diet would do for someone like you in, in your situation. And then what you should see is really good strength gains in the gym where you're seeing your major lifts really going up and you start to feel, right. you know, really good. Um, so, but I would definitely do it uh, structured mm. and I would pay attention to what's going on and not allow yourself to, if it is indeed rewiring patterns in the brain, uh, then you could always create those patterns back up. Right. So stay as consistent as possible. Yeah. And, and if I was you, I'd be like, like for sure, no alcohol. Like I'm gonna stay away from that. And the reason why I'm saying that is it, it the terzepatide took it away, which means that there's the, the impulsive part of the brain that was reaching for the alcohol was the part that's affected. Uh, whereas other people who don't necessarily have an impulsive from my experience with people, the very limited amount of people I've talked to, they're like, yeah, it doesn't really affect my alcohol intake. It's the people that I've talked to who have who have some issues with alcohol where they kind of drink a little too much or whatever or use it to uh, in ways that maybe aren't as great that find the benefit from using the GLP-1s. So I would avoid that completely so that you don't move back in that direction. Right, right. I, I would love to right. actually- uh, because, I love follow-up. Yeah, I want, I want follow-up with you because this is something that I'm super, we're all super curious about as I'm going yeah. through it and more and more people are handling it. I just had a, we had a big talk with a bunch of trainers and one of the things that we are trying to communicate to them is like, do not fall in the trap of feeling like you need to take a camp of you're super right. anti Discarded. these yeah. or you think they're the best thing ever. I said, like, you're going to have to learn to work with these with clients and understand yeah. the value and it, as a, it's a tool and some people it could hurt them and some people it could be extremely valuable to them. And so uh, I would love to hear you, you know, circle back with us as you come off this. In fact, <sighs> Rachel, are you in our private forum or no? I am. Yes. Okay. Oh, I, yeah. Uh, Follow up. Would you I share with us? Started, yeah, I can. Yeah. Please. And I just started Alec, um, on like the third week of phase one. Oh, wonderful. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Now, yeah, when, please when, keep us updated. When you come off the terzepatide, is it a scale back process or is it cold turkey? How do they process that? <laughs> uh, uh, the nurse <coughs> practitioner that I'm working with right now, like I said earlier, I think they don't really know either. Right. But they, they gave me the option. Um, and she said that, you know, the other clients they worked with did better when they scaled back, that she's had clients that tried to just cold turkey it. And then they put weight back on and were coming back within a couple of months wanting to restart. So it makes sense in my mind to I'll, I'll kind of taper off of it. I think that may, so I'll tell you my strategy, even though I'm not here yet, what I, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to tailor off where I'm like once every other week and then a half the dose and kind of go like that. And then I yeah. actually told the guys, I think I'm going to keep a bottle or two of this always in my house. And I, when I know I'm going somewhere where I'm going to have a lot of temptation to binge or grab things that are not ideal, I think I might use it. 
I was like, I see, yeah. you know, if I was going on a vacation for a week to Vegas or going somewhere where there's going to be alcohol and food and I'm just not going to be in a, a place of what, a lot of healthy choices, I think I might actually insert it, utilize it as a tool for that one week and then be off of it right after that again, just to help. Yeah. I, you know, so that's kind of what I'm thinking have, I'm, I'm going to uh, do. Yeah. So, yeah. um, but yeah, let's let's do this together instead of because uh, it is so new for all of us. I would love to hear your journey, and as you give us feedback, you know, hopefully we can be there to support totally. uh, you going through it. Great, yeah, I'm excited to to build some of the muscle back. Awesome, awesome, awesome Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. We'll see you in the forum. All right, thank you. Thank yep. you. Appreciate it. The most interesting part of all that was the uh, she didn't want the alcohol, bro. It's a trip. Yeah. That's how I feel about yeah. ice cream. Ice cream yeah. is my thing. It's like yeah. whatever comforts you. Like, uh, you know, it's one of those things, the coping thing, right? It's affecting the heat. It seems like the hedonistic reward yes. system. Yeah. It's whatever you reach for, that's like kind of an impulse. Yeah. So it's very interesting. But like anything, if you don't work with it uh, and develop those, those better uh, behaviors along mm -hmm. with it, then it, it's going to be this like thing that I need. All you know the what's time. so weird though, Sal? Like, and I know alcohol and, and ice cream are different, but in the to your hedonistic point, is there like I want to believe that I had I was using it like a coping thing, but no, I just love the fucking taste of ice yeah. cream, and it's just so enjoyable that once I get going, it triggers that like I could just keep eating this because it's yeah, so some good. Reward system, that you're, and there's ah. not like you know I've journal try to figure D dive in is there something i'm trying to know <laughs> well it doesn't have to necessarily be that it's basically what it is is because it could be that uh but right. it's not in your case but it, it's definitely that the it, you people develop a rela a hedonistic relationship with something right mm -hmm. to where they can't seem to put the the brakes on it or they go above and beyond uh, or you know, it's what i think it what i that's think what it seems like well, at least. i've attached it to certain things remember i told you like, there's like a formula yeah, yeah. i have figured out like and it, it's actually having a great workout yeah, having yeah. a good day having great sex with my wife and i'm like ice cream is the fucking topper yeah, to this yeah, you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. and so that has yeah. like been like and I, I love it i enjoy yeah. it it's an all it's an all positive thing in my head i think i go well, I've worked out, so I've I've I, I can yeah. I can handle the extra calories. I had a great day. Wife and I just made great yeah. love. I'm gonna enjoy a nice dessert afterwards. But what's wild is it's just not there. Yeah, because like you don't even have a desire it, for it. Because here's the deal: like uh, you know, every, most people enjoy ice cream, right? Most people can find some enjoyment from alcohol. Most people can enjoy some enjoy, enjoyment from using other substances. But for some people, the GLP ones seem to take some of those things away, and I think it's people who have developed some kind of a relationship with those uh, those either products or activities where the hedonism uh, of it is uh, is, well, is as it like disproportional dopamine serotonin sort of spikes you know like you know it, i'm here's, just trying to think here's like good question for for like don't know. caffeine like intake for me for here's instance, it here's like, well that hasn't I wonder, stopped so that I hasn't wonder. stopped that hasn't stopped or slowed down for me what uh, what has tripped me out alcohol because i have a different relationship with alcohol yeah, i don't yeah. really care for alcohol that much but yeah. i enjoy it occasionally socially yeah. we went to that event i had some drinks there what keeps me from not doing the alcohol again is that it fills me up and then I get like no food and then I feel the effects yeah. of no food. Yeah. No food and just alcohol makes everybody feel awful. Yeah. So I so I could have, like I had I think two or three drinks that one day, <clears throat> but that was all my calories. Yeah. And so then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like- But like, alcohol for you is different, right? It's the ice cream. Thing yeah, 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 I don't have, I don't like, my, my point was that it's interesting even how- uh, I can enjoy that, but I, I don't even have, Listen, I really don't I, want to I do told it. you guys, I know a guy who's using it for sex addiction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as he seen positive effects? and everybody enjoys sex, but yeah. some people develop some, a relationship with it or they, you, you start it's to an move. Obsession, yeah. Yeah. So weird. This is very, very strange and interesting. And yeah. I, I can't wait to get more information from people who come off of them and what the pitfalls are going to be like. Cause there's yes, going to be, it's very interesting. Yeah. Cause there's got to be challenges. Never like, Oh, well, just, the best thing we can do is to continue to educate and inform the audience as totally. we go through these type of totally. stories. Mm. And so this will be interesting. Our next caller is Steve from North Carolina. Hey Steve. Hey, How can we Steve? Help you? hey guys. How are y'all? Good. Good. What's going on? Good to see you. You too. Not a lot. <laughs> hey, I uh, want to first thank y'all for uh, creating the program you did. I've been using it for about two months with Map Starter. I'm 57 years old and have been lifting most of my life, just kind of programs I've thrown together. But I was looking for something that would help me kind of get into lifting systematically, would help me um, have a program where I wouldn't get bored, where it'd be a repetitive week in, week out, twice a week type of workout. 
and this map starter really helped me out with that so i appreciate it awesome. um, nice. i'm looking to, i'm looking to do a build a lifetime of fitness and uh for a reason just just so i can be around longer and have a more fuller life and i think y'all said it best a couple of weeks ago maybe a week ago it's about it's about freedom the freedom to do things yep so um the question the question i have for y'all is actually two questions and i appreciate you taking both of them is the first is I use my fitness pal to track calories. When I do that, it gives you an option. And one of the options is to add back your calories burned through exercise. So I'm starting in, with 2250 calories and I've broken it down like y'all recommend, but I, my goal weight's 220. So 220 grams of protein, 190 grams of carb, which is less than the 200 and the fat just fills in from there at 77 grams. And should I be adding back the exercise calorie so the 500 calories or so I burn every day for exercise, should I be adding that back into my base calories? No, no. And the reason why I say no is just because there's such a large variance in that and adding that variable, they're already like an estimation, right? And right, trying right. to estimate a weight training workout, a hike for two hours, a swim for a half hour, the, it just it just broadens how more uh, how far more off you can be. And so the, the, the margin for error just explodes. Thank you. That's a better way to say it. Yeah. So it. my, my thing with my clients was I just want us to track. So we know now you and I know consistently what our workouts look like. And, and what we're really looking for is trends in the right direction, up or down in weight, maintaining weight, strength going up like that. And, but you can really start to skew it by trying to guesstimate or allowing the thing, the app to guesstimate how many <clears throat> calories your uh your workout burn and so i don't i recommend to just put put the the, the nutrients in and and get the macros so we have an idea and then you and i would okay. go like okay based off of what i've been seeing when i eat this many calories my workouts are relatively the same and activities relatively the same i like to track steps too because i think steps give you an idea of if, if it's a regular week like obviously if you and i average five thousand steps a week and then all of a sudden you have this crazy week where you you're traveling and you're and you're walking all over you know say Japan or somewhere and you take fifteen thousand now that would obviously make a difference in your calorie burn but if we're relatively the same step wise eating wise that should be enough for us and you do the same same kind of workouts to get a pretty good guesstimation if we're moving in the right direction yeah. so that'd be my advice to that one in other words Steve just just listen watch what happens to your body and adjust your calories from there don't 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 base it off the estimation. So, so is twenty two fifty the right amount for me? I don't know. You got to follow it for a while and see how you feel. Now, what's your goal? Is, it, is your goal weight loss, weight gain, uh, performance uh, improvements? Cut weight, cut weight loss. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm already getting stronger. I can feel it. I mean, after after two months of this, after two months of starter, I'm already feeling a lot stronger. Oh, awesome. that's that's Sweet. a good sign. Yeah, I would I would I would watch the scale and performance. Uh, mm -hmm. Your performance in the gym. If the scale's moving down at a at a nice slow even pace, then you're probably at the right calories, and your performance is doing good. You're probably at the right calories. At the beginning, Steve, I always tell my clients we are better off seeing the scale stay the same and getting stronger than we are seeing a really fast drop in weight. A really fast drop in weight means you're cutting too many. Say that. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, if you're kind of, you know, staying the same weight or slowly dropping and you're actually feeling good in the gym and that's a good you're sign good that you're in that Goldilocks zone of you're probably building a little bit of muscle, you're probably burning a little bit of body fat. And then it's just the mental discipline of kind of staying there for a while uh, and, and then and not really adjusting until you absolutely need to. Right. Um, and one one other question, please. Beginner question, I guess. Um, the way the way that I've been doing this is, I'll start out with the with the priming, and I'll take the priming and I'll do go through each of the three, and then I'll go back through each of the three, and that's the same thing with with the exercises. So if I'm doing like the um, the the front loaded squats, I'll go do one of those, then the bent over row, then the arm roll press, then the lunge, and I'll go back and start over and do those. Is that the correct order? Or should no. I do? Should I do? Two, two. Back to back. Yeah, you do. No. You do the sets of each exercise, uh, uh, each. So the front squats, you would do two sets or three sets of that first. Then you yeah. move to the next Got exercise. It. There's Got a reason. It. There's a okay. reason for so that it's not too. Like a circuit. Yeah. There's a reason. Oh for yeah, that. I know y'all have a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely a reason for that. I mean, you want when you're when we're especially when we're strength training to build muscle. 
you staying with that exercise gives the body, the CNS, an ability to really adapt to the movement and get the biggest bang for your buck out of the movement. If you just if you go from one exercise to the next, what happens is now the body's like, oh, trying to figure out this exercise before you're reaping the max benefits. You're so also, you, you, you're you're also just, better at teaching that movement. Yeah, and you also tend to fatigue uh, stabilizer muscles or muscles you'll want for compound lifts. You know, like... If I'm doing a barbell row and then I just did curls, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make my ability to do the, the, the barbell row. I'm going to reduce my ability to do it effectively because I fatigue my biceps, uh, which isn't necessarily actually for most people, not a good idea. So do the sets of each exercise and then move to the next one. Great. Thank you. Thank you all so much again. I really appreciate it for my next, for my next, I've already picked up map prime and, and, um, maps anabolic. So perfect. Um, yeah. that's I was the, the direction I was heading next. Oh, yeah, perfect. Anabolic's perfect. perfect. Follow up. Yeah. Are you, uh, Steve, are you in our forum? I am not. Let, I'm going to have Doug put you in our forum so we can keep an eye on you and you oh. can, uh, if you got more questions like this, as you go through the process, just hit us up in there. Thanks. I really appreciate it guys. Thank you all. You got it, Steve. All right, all Steve. right man. Y'all have a good one. You too. Good job. That's a, that's cool. So he's he'd worked out before for a while, and then yeah. went to Map Starter, and that just go and he's getting great results. And that just goes to show, like Map Starter is not just for complete mm -hmm. beginners; it's for people who've never really followed a well programmed workout to get your body moving the right way. Because now from starting to go to Map Starter, it's always about the right dose. That's man. right, and, and that's the thing is we can just in our own mind create this idea that we need to go so intense and like yeah. this is what i used to do and you know whatever's appropriate for you right now is is the best recipe i, I mean i love hearing you could tell that he's listening to a lot of episodes yeah you know mm -hmm. yeah. nodding his head before i can finish the advice and stuff like that like yeah, yeah no i know i knew like, you'd say that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> you know great. as far as you know trying to replace calories with activity your body adapts to exercise and learns how to burn less calories while doing that exercise Number one, and you said it best, Adam, the, the margin for error at figuring out your caloric intake, you just took that margin and just blew it way the heck up yeah. because now you're trying to calculate how many calories you burn, which nobody, there's, there is no really accurate way to figure approach, that out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And just, it's already, that's a difficult thing to already kind of estimate. It's funny because these apps, they keep getting more sophisticated and can attach to different other tools yeah. and like, mm -hmm. you know, because it's a competitive market and, you know, they can say they do all these things. But the truth is the most valuable thing these things do is just a place that finds the food and estimates That's the it. calories That's for it. you. Like that right there is just the, is all you need from it. And then mm -hmm. having a, a tool that tracks yeah, kind of your more steps controllable. so you have an idea of what a, a normal day or week of mm -hmm. movement looks like. Those are the two big rocks when it comes to kind of figuring out where's my metabolism and where do I need to go from there. Our next caller is Morgan from Minnesota. Hi, Morgan. Hey, Morgan. How can we help Hello? you? Hello. How are you guys? Good. We're good. good. How are you? Good. Good. So I had sent in a question in the beginning and I kind of wanted to rephrase it a little bit, if that's okay. Yeah, you can sure. ask whatever um, you want. So my beginning question was how strongly do genetics play a role in our physiques? But I kind of wanted to rephrase it into like, how do you know you're at like a healthy body type, you know, like not talking just body, body fat percentage, but just overall you're healthy in general. Ooh, good question. Very good question. Well, that's going to go back to your relationship with exercise and nutrition and your body. So right. yeah. Are you eating in a way that feels nourishing or does it feel stressful and controlled? Do you exercise in a way to where you care for yourself uh, and you're going in and you're accurate with that? Or does it feel like you're forcing something to happen or, or running from yourself. something or punishing yourself? And then how right. is the rest of your life? Because exercise and diet are two factors, but then there's relationships with people, relationships with the world, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, spiritual practice. So it's a very simple yet very complex question that you're asking. Uh, now, now, truth truth be told, um, I have met very, very few people who are just great in all of that. It's it's yeah. a journey, and it waxes and wanes, and we're human, and uh, this is a challenge for everybody, especially fitness professionals. Well, and the, like ourselves, the, and the range, uh, you know, not to completely tie it to body fat percentage, but using that as kind of somewhat of a metric to measure are we healthy or not? Like it's it's so wide. Like you could be a, you could be a female and be as low as you know thirteen to fifteen percent. And as high as, you know, 28, 29% and be considered healthy in that yeah. range. Yeah. That's a huge right. range and will look very different on your body. You know what I'm saying? Your body will look very different. And Based so on where you're carrying it. Yeah. Yeah. So a, a lot of that has to do with, you know, how you're performing your energy, how it's affecting all the other aspects of your life. Like, 
you know, if you're training and dieting and you're at a body fat percentage, who cares what that number is, but you right. feel like, for example, right now, I feel some of the healthiest I've ever been in my life. By no means am I even close to the most jacked I've ever been. Like I've looked to the other, somebody else would laugh at that and go like, yeah, right. I've seen you look like this on state, but it's like, I wasn't my healthiest there. I looked right. to other people like the most jacked and healthy, but no, 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 no. I have a way better balance and relationship with exercise, food and family and, and, and mobility and all this other stuff. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah. there's a lot that goes into that. I think, yeah. You got to factor in mood. You got to factor in like other factors with uh, skin, hair, like uh, the way your, your, your attitude, like your, your drive, like so many other things too, that you can kind of put in there that's not physically based uh, as far as like your metrics. So uh, it, th again, this is, this is something too. I think a lot of times when we meet somebody in person, we can tell whether or not, you know, how healthy they are based off of like their interactions with other people and, uh, you know, how right. they look in their eyes and, and, you know, things like that, that aren't really as obvious yeah. uh, to most people. Morgan, how, how long have you been, uh, exercising for consistently? Um, consistently like six years. Okay. Um, so I, yeah, I, I love the fact of like, before my trip for Mexico, I got super lean, loved it. And now I guess I'm just at a place where I'm like, kind of, what's the point? I'm just kind of like, cause I'm not, there's no goal really. It's just kind of like, we're just going to the gym to go to the gym. And that's kind of what I love to do, but that's, that's a great, that's a great place to be. Mm -hmm. Don't fall. So there's nothing wrong with goals. Okay. There's nothing wrong with trying to hit goals, but that should not be ultimately, uh, and you're young. So as you continue doing this, you'll, you'll, you'll start to figure this out. But you, if you fall in love with always have, having to have a goal, then you'll find yourself in this place where you're like, well, I enjoy doing it, but I don't have a goal. So I feel kind of lost. The, yeah. the, the, you know, I heard, I heard somebody say this, uh, last, uh, a couple weeks ago. I thought this was brilliant. You know, uh, exercising, trying to eat right. It's a sacrifice. You're sacrificing your presence your present enjoyment for the future self, right? So right now I'm, I'm doing these hard things to benefit the future me, but the ultimate place to be is when the present and the future come together. So now I'm doing this for its enjoyment. So I'm exercising because I, I it truly enjoy it and it's joyful for me. I eat healthy because I feel joy while I care for myself. And then of course that benefits me now, but it also benefits me uh, in the future. And then uh, here's here's a little tip where you know if you're healthy or, or not when you're consistent. The most extreme versions of yourself, the strongest, the fastest, the leanest, typically is not the healthiest. So for people who are really consistent with their fitness, this is this is now fitness fanatics, the most jacked version of yourself, the most whatever impressive looking in a on social media probably wasn't the healthiest because it probably was the least balanced. Right, exactly. I think that's kind of where I'm struggling with the extremes of yeah. now I'm just kind of in the, the median there, but yeah, you know, it's, it's almost like being in a relationship. Uh, you know, sometimes people only feel happy when they're in tons of drama, right. When they're, when they're with somebody and they're like, Oh, well things are kind of good and peaceful. I'm bored. I feel like we need you to be fighting right. or yeah. So that's right. a, that's, that's similar with exercise. Like if you find, and you want to revisit that, you want to visit that. Right. So it's like, okay, if I'm not extreme, and it feels boring. Why does this feel boring? Let me think about that for a second. Maybe work on this relationship I have with exercise. I, I, I do have a tip to get to that place that Sal's talking about where the, the future you and the present you kind of get aligned and you're enjoying the process. One of the things that's always helped me through that, and it's also kind of uh, in line with you talking about how when you have a goal, you tend to be, like, okay, I've got this goal to be in Vegas or where I'm going. And so I'm focused on these things. Uh, is to is to do workouts that are unique and different to you, like learning a new like I love to take somebody who trains a traditional way all the time and then switching them to one of our programs that is so different. And so then you get kind of like into the like, oh, learning a new movement that's benefiting you. It's making you stronger in different ways that you weren't. It's working muscles that you haven't really at attached. You get to watch yourself go from really weak the first time you do it to getting stronger kind of week over week. That's a very enjoy. That's a, it's a really fun process. It's like learning a new skill, you know? So um, I don't know what your current, I see you work out six days a week. Um, have you ran any of our maps programs yet? No, I am not sure about anabol anabolic or kind of power lift. I think power lift would be cool to see the growth, but also 
is anabolic more like six days a week kind of? No, no, no. no it's three days a week. No, but but powerlift okay. is powerlift is 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 great I, if if you oh, are really yeah. aesthetic focused before because it just places it straight. You know, completely different shit. You're I, just yeah. on strength. I I'm gonna push you there. Anytime a, a one of our female clients is is even considering powerlift, I love to push them in that direction. I think yeah. there's so much value. Oh yeah, you should do powerlift. You look yeah. yeah yeah do powerlift. Is, is it six days or five days? Five, like I think. Five. And, yeah. Okay. And the key to power lift is it's, it's going to be interesting as you go through this process is there's going to be workouts where you feel like you can add more weight to the bar or do more. Follow it the way it's laid out. Trust the process. Yeah, it's, it's all based off percentages. The programming is yeah. really great. At yes, strong. It, it is designed when you at the end of that program, you're going to be stronger than you've ever been where people mess it up is in the middle of it. They're like, oh, I could do more. So I need they think they should do more. So they do more. And that does not benefit their their end results. Follow it the way it's laid out. Trust the process and enjoy it. Sounds good. Do I keep steps kind of the same? Um, yeah. I don't do cardio now, yeah. so. Oh, yeah, yeah you're, doing, you're doing great. Yeah, yeah. Keep everything else okay. the same. Follow activity. the way the program's uh, laid out. I mean, I, I, we just saw a picture of you. You look like you're in a very healthy, balanced place nutritionally. I mean, I'd even keep, listen to your body. If you, What you might notice is you might, your appetite might yeah. kick up a little bit. I want to increase calories. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and if it does, listen to it, feed it, make good choices, mm -hmm. you know, lead with protein first, like we always talk about. And I, I think you're going to do great. I was listening to the recent podcast. I think I forgot who's on the new Triz Appetite. Or... That's me. That's me. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, and you're like not eating to stuff yourself anymore. Yeah. Is... Yeah. The, the the verdict is not out on who and how I would recommend this to a lot of people. It's pretty wild what I'm I'm noticing as far as what I can tell you for sure. I'm losing muscle too. So it's not like, yeah. yeah, for somebody who wants to have muscle and Adam would not be somebody that we would recommend take yeah. it. Yeah. No, I don't want to do it. I just, I'm curious if you think like stuffing your face, cause my calories are really low. I can't eat like I eat like 2000 to 2200. Yeah. But I just like can't eat more throughout the day and I, I don't feel fine. like it's healthy. I think you're, stuffing my I think you're fine. We just saw a picture of you. I see your, 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 your five, you 10. look fit and healthy. Yeah. You look fit and healthy. You look really right. at a really good place yeah. and you're not doing cardio. Okay. You're just strength training. Um, I think you're in a great place, yep. especially if you feel satisfied. You don't feel like you're stuffing. You don't feel like right. you're starving. You're at a right. nice, you you're know, a nice just providing you new stimulus with this new program. So yeah, yeah you'll yeah. have a lot. If, of you're, if your sleep is good, you're, you're, if you have a good, a healthy menstrual cycle, if you feel uh, energized throughout the day, focused, you don't have brain fog, like you're, you're fine. Yep. You're good. Cool. Yep. Awesome. Doug right. will send over a power lift and uh, stay in touch with us. Let us know how the process goes. Yeah. Sounds good. I will. All Thanks, right, guys. You got it. Thanks, right. Morgan. Great. Great question. Yeah. yeah. Great question and great place. I, yeah. She, she <laughs> looks good headspace. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah I th it's, we tend to over question um, everybody, right? Am I going yeah. in the right direction? What's going on? And I, do I need to do this, that, the other? And, the, and that over questioning tends to happen when things are going well. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Especially because, yeah, you might be unfamiliar with how, you know, why, you know, you feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. well, I feel good, but why? <laughs> you're, you're doing good. Yeah. Our next caller is Kyle from Oregon. Hi, Kyle. How can we help you? Hi. Oh, it's so nice to meet you guys. I've been sipping on chamomile tea trying to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. So, um, I have actually been a listener for like six years, so this Hell is yeah. really crazy. Wow. That's yeah, awesome. I'm really awesome. excited. That's right. Thank you. Um, yeah, so, um, I have my question here. I just added some context to it and a little bit of an update and some background. Um, so I will just go ahead and read it. Um, both my chiropractor and physical therapist have told me I might be obsessed with achieving symmetry, both visually and in movement. I respect both of them and they've helped me so much, but I'd like to tell them what you guys think about it. In the last couple of years, I've been in and out of chiro and PT care as a result of random injuries. It seemed when I was about done uh, with the care for one injury, another injury would pop up. And it's been really frustrating to always be fixing something. I think the reason why both of them might think that I'm fo hyper focused on this is um, I would just report back each week, you know, how the injury is doing and how the exercises helped, but also it would like reveal other areas of weakness um, or maybe I gain new connection to the muscles 
um, just not even working on the air, not even in the area that I was working on. So, um, but in addition to that, I would also talk to them about how my right elbow doesn't straighten. My upper right leg seems to be turned in, making my jeans fit weird on that side. And I've also shared um, something that has like haunted me for years. Um, a long time ago, my mother-in-law had said she could tell who I was from across the football field because of the way I was walking. Mm. And so <laughs> I just kind of thought, oh gosh, I must have a really weird gait. <laughs> um, <laughs> so both my Cairo and physical therapy therapist probably felt like they were spinning their wheels with me. And so did I. Um, in the last two years, I've ran anabolic twice and I've ran symmetry three times. Um, all the time in between there, I would be just working on uh, rehabbing whatever injury had come up. Um, most recently, though, I finished a full round of symmetry and decided I would give performance a try. And so far, it's been um, really helping with some issues in my SI joint um, on my right side, um, my right glutes and my right foot and ankle. Um, and I think the rotational work has really unlocked some muscles that were sleeping. Um, I still have some pain, but it's getting so much better. Um, and specifically, I can still feel a difference in how my right foot is hitting the floor while, you know, walking, standing and lifting. Um, so I've had imbalance on my right side for years. Now I'm realizing this. I never knew any of this until I started listening to you guys. Um, so what I wanted to know is, is it a good plan to incorporate symmetry between each new program? Yes. So for example, after performance, should I do symmetry um, again? And then eventually what I would like to do is get to where um, I can add some weight to the bar. And like I had bought um, power, is it power? What is it called? Power I bought it a long time ago. Yeah. yeah power lift a long time ago. Um and I would like to be able to do something like that because I'd like to bench 135, squat 185. Um, those are both things. I don't think I quite got to 135 in high school, but I was close to it. And um, if I have those numbers completely wrong, I still feel like this is attainable. <laughs> um, but I don't feel comfortable increasing my weight a lot until I can get these imbalances solved. And sometimes I feel like I'm trying to solve something that's not solvable. Um, and just working on strength is really important to me because I want to get away from chasing aesthetics. And until 2020, I have been doing that since I was 15. Um, and I just want to be a good example to people in my life who are still stuck in that mindset. And I'm hoping you can help. Thank you. All right. So I need more information from your, okay. in regards to chiropractor and PT. What is their advice after they tell you you're obsessed or over obsessed with symmetry, with, with, with achieving symmetri symmetrical balance? What do they tell you to do after that? Um, I don't, I don't rem recall, um, anything specific. Like they weren't, they were saying it more like in a tongue in cheek, but you know, like, are you too obsessed about this? Mm. Um, so they didn't really offer like a solution to it. <laughs> um, I mean, I will say it like, I, I will walk around the house doing stuff and I'm like, how is my right foot feeling? Do I need to stop and do some I ankle stuff that. right now? <laughs> I well, love that. So, that's, a, that's like a trainer mind, right? It now. is, but yeah, that's, that's totally also, that's not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> right. So, so uh, one of the characteristics of uh, anxiety or, you know, just is that, that ruminating self-awareness, the constant thought of myself and what's happening, how do I feel yeah. and what's going on. And so if that's happening to you throughout the day, then this is becoming more of a stress uh, than a benefit. Okay. So the reason why I asked you what their advice was is because uh, that would, that would have given me more information, help me help direct where I would want to go with you. If you have repeated injuries, typically, and I know you're following our programming, but typically what that mm -hmm. means is you're either overtraining, under eating or both. So what we probably, okay. what we may want to do is scale back on the intensity, focus a little bit on giving your body more rest and recovery because repeated injuries can definitely come from imbalances. They could definitely come from you know, uh, you know, one side moving differently than the other side, but also oftentimes it comes from you just doing too much. Mm -hmm. You might be doing okay. too much if you repeat because you've ran our program so many times. I think you're running them right. I, I, can, I don't watch you doing the workout, so maybe doing the exercise is wrong, but because you've been working out for so long, listening to the podcast, you're working with a PT, they, they know movement, chiropractors sometimes know movement really well. Uh, you're probably doing too much. You're probably either going too hard or applying yourself too what, much. What are these injuries? Like, what do they consist of? 
Oh, yeah. Um, well, the first one um, I hear Adam talk about every once in a while, it wasn't a bag of dog food that I had lifted, but it was a bag that I had gotten out of the back of my car and I just had twisted around mm-hmm. and hurt. I actually it was my left shoulder that I hurt there. So that was my first round. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then it was, um, I sprained my wrist golfing mm-hmm. and which I didn't know I could have such an injury doing such a calm <laughs> yeah. sport. Sure. Um, and then the other one was, um, I tore my hamstring. Um, uh, playing beach volleyball on vacation. Mm. Like it wasn't even competitive stuff. Like it was just for fun. Yeah. How uh, do so, you ever take um, time off? Are you like super consistent for years with your workouts? Um, I, I would love to say that I am super consistent all the time. Um, this, I, in the past, like three months is probably the most consistent that I've been in a couple years. Um, so I, I think, um, well, one thing that I'm doing a little differently this time around that I did during symmetry is, um, I really tracked my protein and just my calories, just making sure that I'm eating enough, getting enough protein. And I did notice that I got quite a bit more strength gain, um, Mm -hmm. in during symmetry. I think at one point I, I was frustrated that it was not, I felt like I wasn't getting any results from symmetry, but I don't think I was dialed in on. Uh, protein yeah. at that time, or maybe even calories. I, I mean, so you, Sal, you're, you're kind of alluding to potential like overtraining, over usage, stuff like that. I think, under eating. I think it's more you're starting to finally kind of dial it all in, and we're just getting there right now. Like the idea of you going between symmetry and performance, I love that. Yeah. And I think you're already seeing the benefits of three months of consistency of like following that plan. The fact that you're yeah. going after me, uh, and also to address the obsession with you know using your right hand, let like if it's <laughs> if it's not causing stress, I like that. If it's if you if you're if it's causing stress and it's like a negative thing where you like go, oh my god, I, I, and you and you're hard on yourself, that's not a good thing, a healthy thing to self point. But man, I, I mean, I just flew in a plane. When I'm sitting in a plane, I recognize that I'm slashing. Then all of a sudden, you'll see me sit up and retract my shoulders. If I walk up a step a certain way, I notice if I'm always putting my weight and pressure on my like. That's just my trainer brain. Like I'm not stressing about it. I'm like aware of it, and so I try and counter it. So yeah. how you okay. how you feel about that? I think is most important. If it's causing stress, not healthy to sell. Yeah, because we yeah, to that point too. I I do think you diving into performance and going in these multi planer type uh, yes movements where you're getting more familiar in end range positions and rotational uh, situations like from. What you described, like some of these are probably abrupt, uh, you know, explosive type movements. Your your body's just re- reacting, maybe even overreacting uh, because we're not training that. It's not showing up in, in what you're doing in the gym. Uh, so to, to lean further into that, um, I think would be massively beneficial, especially the mobility days. Yeah, just a little discernment too. It's okay. like if you've ever caught yourself talking to somebody and then thinking about how you're coming across while you're talking to that person – that would be yeah. too much self awareness, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah. So that's that's what I'm talking about. Like, if you find yourself like, oh my, you know, thinking about yourself a lot while you're moving and walking and wearing clothes, and you mentioned how your yeah. jeans fell and like ruminating a little bit, then yeah, there might be a little too much self awareness, which will actually impede on progress. Because like, try uh-huh. walking and thinking about walking while you're walking, you're gonna walk weird. Like that's just what right. happens. It's it's yeah. supposed to be a natural movement. Like try like right now. Like think about blinking or breathing. All of a sudden you're breathing manually, and it's very awkward. So that's that's where okay. it could become a little bit like, uh oh, I might be a little a little obsessive. Now the reason why I asked you about your consistency is because there's two mm-hmm. with the repeated injuries. What I've seen with people is either a they overdo it too consistently, too long, they never take time off, or they stop and start, and when they start, they go real hard. They go too hard mm-hmm. all at once. Uh, how is, okay. are you, do you think you're overplaying intensity? Do you think you're working out appropriately? Like, how do you feel post-workout? Are you really sore? Do you feel like you beat yourself up? How's your sleep? Cause th- this will tell me a little um, bit more. I do try to, I try to stay pretty aware of that. Um, just because I've been listening to you guys for so long. Um, I feel like, um, I'm pretty energized after my workouts. Um, I, now I'm kind of like tracking my sleep. Like how is my sleep affected? Mm -hmm. I did uh, phase two yesterday. I started phase two of performance yesterday and that actually was a lot for me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I saw that I didn't, I don't know if this is normal, but I didn't get as much deep sleep last night, for example. And so I just think maybe I need to bring the intensity down a little bit. Yes, definitely. On that. Yeah. Um, and sometimes though, when I'm doing the mobility work on the in-between days, those are actually pretty taxing. They're 
way more taxing than I thought they would be. And so I actually wasn't sure, am I supposed to do all of the things listed or just take a few of the exercise in those mobility You could take sessions? just a, you could do, take just a few. Especially yeah. if you feel it's very Definitely taxing. Definitely listen to your body. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would cut the volume of performance down by a third. So take all the sets, okay. cut them down by a third. If you still notice a negative effect on yours, because sleep will be the first thing to tell you. I'm glad you're tracking yeah. it. It'll be the first thing to tell you if you did too much. And if you see a reduction in deep sleep, that is for sure a red flag. Ugh, I, did, I went a little too hard. So cut everything down okay. by a third. And then if that doesn't do it, cut the intensity also yeah. way down. And, and then that should do it. Yeah. And this also highlights the unfamiliarity with a lot of these like movements yeah. in, in your joint expression. Like, so uh, take your yeah. time with that, but I would almost run it again. You know, because this is such a novel okay. stimulus for you, um, and this shouldn't be that taxing for you, the mobility stuff. It's just that your your body is going to like it, misuse its energy because it's it's unfamiliar with that uh, process. So to to kind of like repeat it and and get better at it and more efficient with it, um, you're going to notice a massive benefit. And the way I would gauge if I'm on the right track or not is not night by night sleep. I would look at my sleep for a week, right? So like <coughs> Sal just gave you a recommendation to take one third out. So basically Basically, you take one set of every exercise out. Now, yeah. don't look at just tomorrow's night sleep because right. it takes workout. Look at what your yeah. total average for the week of like sleep score was. And did that move it in the right direction? If it moved in the right direction, you probably moved in the right direction of intensity, right? Same thing goes with the mobility thing. Change one or two variables. Give yourself a week or two of consistency. Then, then score yourself off of what you see the average is. And then let okay. that be more of a guideline. Because there's so many variables that can also affect sleep. I wouldn't want you to do the right thing on intensity, but then you also, you know, something happens. Something else day. happens, stressful happen, and yeah. then that's really what mess up the sleep, or you yeah, watch TV point. in bed late. So give yourself a good solid right. week or two of manipulating one of these variables and then and then score it based off you, of that. You you uh you referred back to okay. high school. Were you an athlete in high yeah. school? What's your background? No, I was not all. I'm like a farm girl. I had horses. I just had to carry like heavy water okay. buckets. All right, all right, all right. And mm. I was like, I thought back. I was like, I cannot believe I could do that when I was in high school. Like we were, my gym partner, you know, or my weights partner. Um, we were like the strong girls <laughs> yeah, in the well, class. Yeah. I've met a few farm and, girls. Um, all strong. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and so now I'm just like after that. Then the whole, um, you know, it was the '90s. So. Um, then it was aerobics and step aerobics. Yeah. So then I just went down that and that's all I did until like 2019, really. So um, till I started listening to you guys. Awesome. Um, yeah. So I feel like I could get back there. I hope. Yeah. But yeah. I also wrote courses and everything is just always in front of me. I've never done anything rotational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I just felt like performance might be the best, the best it, it, option. It is. Yeah. It is. I that love, symmetry. Yeah. Right? Poor performance. I think you're on the right track with that goal. I think that sure. it's really just trying to figure out maybe the intensity and what you're applying and the balance there. I think uh, those are a great option yeah. for you. But, but string of injuries, one after another, when you're finding one injury, another injury, and they don't seem to be connected, hamstring, wrist, and whatever. Typically yeah. means typically means undersleeping, overtraining, under eating, or all three combined. It typically means that. Not okay. always, but typically. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm in a I'm really dialed. I think like the protein thing has really yeah. helped. Yep. Good. So I mean one major thing, but awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Great. I can't wait to see how everything works out for you. Yeah, we will see how it goes. Awesome. Stay, stay in touch. Let us know, Kyle. Please. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Okay. Bye. I dig the uh, the decor vibe. Oh, the yeah, <laughs> total Adam was, thing to say. <laughs> I was going to tell her. I was like, "Well, we, we were talking." Who about decorated your house? Uh, <laughs> uh, what if it was one of those back, you know, those uh, Zoom screens? Oh yeah, not real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know the the uh, it usually, and this is just for trainers listening. If you if you have a client, and the client says. These three people that I know that I work with who are professionals, experts, all say the same thing. <laughs> then you're, usually you're, there's, there's some something commonality there. there yeah. usually, that's why I ask, like, what else are they saying? And she sure. doesn't remember. But I wonder if the chiropractor and PT you're telling her you're Back probably off. overtrained. Yeah, they might be telling her. Yeah, that's why I ask that because if it's both people, then there there may be some truth there uh, as to what. I going also on. think we're still early on in like her really kind of figuring this all out. Yeah. Like I think she's starting to piece things together. Like she started to do performance. It's like, oh wow, I really noticed this rotation. And yeah. two of those 
those injuries are rotational things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the the wrist and shoulder issue are both. She lacked yeah. that rotational yeah, strength and stability. The difference. Yeah, and, and the hamstring could also have been tied to that also with just hip stability and strength True. and just did something explosive. Rapid extension. Yeah. So her just doing some uh, symmetry and performance consistently, you yeah. know, I bet she runs that back to back a couple times should see a dramatic improvement in that. And then also taking your advice of potentially scaling, scaling back. back the intensity on it. Exactly. Look, if you like Mind Pump, we have a peptide guide. It's free. It'll teach you about all the most popular peptides, how to use them, what they're for, who they're for, and who they're not for. It's at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Media and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.